with you. The voice of the beat. You know what I want, Blazer. Come on, Blazer. It's the beat for me. Wah, 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 wah
Tessa, what's up? Neff, at the disrespect. Y'all, please go sub to the channel. Great channel. Hey, Maya. Hey, Christian. I'm about to say Krishan, girl. Please don't be Krishan. Hey, Michelle. Hey, everyone. Voodoo Mize. Y'all had me scared to speak. Silence me and have no clue what I did wrong. When? Who silenced you? Now, come on now. Who silenced you? Ain't nobody silenced you. What happened? Put it down in the chat. I missed it. Thank you, Keyshawn the Burks, for the super chat. She said, hey, Voodoo Doll and Dollhouse just stopping in to say hi. We'll have to catch the live later on my way to Atlantic City with my husband. Girl, sound like a good time. Tomorrow is our one-year anniversary. Happy anniversary to you and your husband. Enjoy the jokes, y'all. Oh, yeah. Enjoy your, your anniversary with your man, girl. Go ahead. Oh, shout out to the uh, people that's married. You know, it ain't for everybody. But shout out to the people it's for, like Miss Keyshawn the Burke. Shout out to you. What's going on, Flower? What's going on? Oh, my Flower said, what's going on? She said, hey, niece, sending much love from Philly. Speaking of Philly, I'm glad you brought that up, Flower. I need two cities in the chat. Comment and let me know if you're present. I need Philly in the chat. I need y'all down here. Oh, uh, even though what we do is wrong, we still hustle till the sun come up. Pack a 40 when the sun go down. It's a cold winter. Y'all just better bundle up. I need y'all up here ASAP. And then y'all, guess who else I need? What other city or state? Oh, uh, where, where else do y'all think I need the people from? From New York. I need y'all up here ASAP. ASAP Rocky. I need y'all up here. I need New York up here ASAP because we got a lot to discuss. Philly and New York is on the docket. And I'm trying to figure out why I done gave New York all of this time off and then y'all come and stab me in the back of my neck with somebody like P. Diddy? Y'all just look. You know, I love New York. Yeah, yeah I do. But at this point, yeah, y'all just want me to get on New York. So I'm going to go ahead on and get on New York. You know what I'm saying? Yup, we'll do it. Hey, Robin. Hey, Jacqueline. She said, hallelujah. I caught, a, I caught, I was on the DL. What? The DL? When you had maybe 200. Oh, the download. Okay, 200 when I found out that you are Pisces. I was born March 9th. Oh, okay, in Louisiana. Don't tell nobody. I still get ID. That's the good point. Go ahead and get your ID. You a fellow Pisces. And if you was around when I had 200 subs, you are definitely a day one. My real, I think the earliest day one I have is Trey Allen, to be completely honest. Trey was around when I had like 25 subscribers. Shout out to Trey Allen, man. I'm forever indebted. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, uh, let me see who else up in here. Because we need to get into it. Energy, what's going on? Let's talk about it. What's going on? Somebody was spamming my chat last week. And I will be checking out. And if I see you spamming my chat, I don't mind you promoting your chat, promoting your stuff in my chat. But do not spam my chat promoting your channels. Or pro don't every comment, every comment. If I see it, I'm blocking you from the whole channel. I'm telling you right now. Go log in on your burn page. But I'm not doing that. Because that, that was just taken away from the flow of what was going on in the chat. Hey, Dre. Hey, Kevin. Can't wait for the live. Love you and your content. Oh, thank you, baby. A bitch stay winning. What's going on? Miss Parker, Miss Parker. Hey, boo. What's going on, baby? Yay. Sonya, what's going on? Misbehaving. What's going on, y'all? For real, I need everybody um, who's supposed to be up in here from the two cities, Philly and New York. I need y'all up to the front of the congregation because I have a few questions. Tessa, she said, put Diddy in prison. Next to R. Kelly, rumors been going too long now. That's what I'm, we gonna get there. Tessa, me and you be on the same page. Hey, Tina, we gonna get there. I'm telling you, we gonna get there. Because I'm trying to figure out why everybody is shocked. Hey, she knows. Hey, Bonnie the Beauty. Hey, what's going on? Who else up in here? Uh, da, 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 da. All right, let's get into it, y'all. Kashari, what's going on? Every time I say that, I see somebody new. All right, let's get into it. I Like I said, before we do anything, I need everybody to like the video. I need everybody to put on your thinking caps. And I also need everybody to do one thing. Wake up! Please, wake up. You get it? Wake up. Let's start with Will Smith. 
Let's start with Will Smith. Okay, Boogie Down Bronx, all in the chat, as you should. What's going on, Boogie Down Bronx? I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx. I don't know why. Every time I hear the Bronx, that it just make me feel like that's how I'm supposed to say it. From the Boogie Down Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Big Queens in the building. Oh, all right, y'all pulling up, as you should. Where is the Philly people? We got Queens up in here. Where is the Philly people? Send, um, send somebody from Philly. Get, um... Gilly and them up here or something. I don't know. Thank you for the super chat, Miss Parker. Miss Parker, she said, not jail, but prison. Did it been needed to go to prison? I don't understand why uh, the people is over here going at the allegations. But we ain't got to Diddy yet. I'm trying to figure out why y'all going for the allegations for Will Smith. I'm confused. Thank you, Special K, for the super chat. She said, back for another Joseph, or whatever the case may be. What up, New York? From New York. Let's get into this content, because I got some things I need to see. I got to say what I got to see. Will Smith. Everybody know. Let's start with him first. Harlem, in a, Harlem on a rise. Yeah. All right. Now, where did it from? Is did it from Harlem? Can somebody tap in? What part of New York? What city is claiming P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puffy, Brother Love? How many names the nigga got? What city does he belong to? Okay, we got Philly up in here. What city does Diddy belong to? Zaria said he from up there in Harlem. I knew it. I knew it. He was too shiny and too dancy. You know what I'm saying? He had too much swiggle in his hips. You know, like, uh, ain't Yandy Luther King's husband from uh, Harlem? Tap in. Ain't he from Harlem? Something about them Harlem niggas. I don't know. It just, it just, they hit a little different. You know what I'm saying? Them Harlem dudes? Child. Somebody say he from Mount Vernon. Now, is that up north of New York? Because it's all still New York. I don't care if it's down south in one of the boroughs on the corner, down the street, or somewhere around the, around the block. It's still New York. Get all, uh, what's that other place up north that people be talking about up in here? Everybody get up in here. Get up in here from New York. Janice Taylor, thank you for the super chat. She said, I love you so much, Voodoo Doll. Let's Joe's boo. Yes, we got the juice. Is he from Brooklyn? What's going on? It's Brooklyn in the house. It's north of the Boogie Down Bronx. Oh, man. Either way, the whole, the whole state taking the L. Just, I just want to know who to give them to. You know what I'm saying? Carla said, y'all ain't talking about Charlotte, but Charlotte is in the house. Where you at, Carla? As you should. Mm-hmm. As you should. I mean, go ahead and plug yourself in, fat. We ain't on you tonight. When we get to Charlotte, Uncle Charlotte... We're going to be looking for you. But tonight, we're not doing Uncle Charlotte. Right now, we're doing Will Smith and P. Diddy. Now, let's get into Will Smith, y'all. Y'all y'all throwing me off. The whole I'm telling you, I don't care who claiming him, that he, he belong to all y'all. Let's get into Will Smith first so we can get him out the way, and then we can get to Diddy. No salt, California in the house. California knows how to party or something like that some whatever they be saying or whatever you know let's get into it now will smith recent rumors have come out about will smith that he allegedly was getting pulverized by dwayne martin my question to the people is put a one in the chat if you believe it put a two in the chat if you call cap I need to see something right quick before I say what I'm saying. If you believe Dwayne Martin and Will Smith drama is true, put a one in the chat. If you believe it's Cap, put a two in the chat. I'm trying to see something. One if it's true, two if it's Cap. Three if you're not sure, but one or two is what I'm really looking for. One if it's true, two if it's Cap. I'm looking. Mm-hmm. Just what I thought. Split decision. Well, let me help y'all out a, a little bit. Let me help y'all out. Okay. First and foremost, I'm trying to figure out to the people who put the, the two in the chat that said it wasn't true. Have we put a one in the chat if you've heard? Let me let, let, me let the numbers go by. All right. Put a one in the chat. If No, put a four in the chat. 
Shit, I'm trying to change the numbers because they still coming in. Put a five in the chat if you've ever heard a gay rumor about Will before. Put a six in the chat if this is your first time ever hearing a gay rumor about Will. Five if you've ever heard a gay rumor. Six if you've never heard a gay rumor. Five if you heard one. Six if you never heard one. I'm really trying to see something. So it looks like we got more fives in the chat, yet it was a split decision on if this one was true. I'm I'm checking y'all out. Uh-huh. Five, 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 five. Uh-huh. Yup, yup. I'm checking y'all out. Listen, I'm looking at y'all. I'm here. I'm here. Look at look at my 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 mind. Talking about she put too many fives in there. <laughs> okay, somebody said I just came in, so one and five. Okay, so it's true, and you've heard rumors in the past. This is if we think this is all alleged. Nobody is saying what is what because we not in Will Smith house in Jada Pinkett house. Now let me just say this. Now that I got the consensus that it's a split decision on whether people believe this rumor in particular is true. Yet people have heard multiple rumors in the past or at least one other rumor in the past of, of this situation. That tells me that we are thinking what our feelings and not with that. See, this lies, we got to throw the feelings out the window. Screw, screw, throw them out. No feelings in this live. I'm telling you, if y'all come in this live with feelings, y'all going to get hurt. Leave your feelings at the door. I don't even allow people to wear shoes in my house. Leave your feelings at the door with the shoes. I got a, 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 a thing right there. You can put your shoes and your feelings in, okay? Hold on. Somebody say something. My mom is in the industry. These are known facts. That, listen. Listen, Lindas. And listen, Lindas. If, if you cannot handle your feelings being challenged, go ahead and leave out facts. Just like the video on the way out. Now, why is this important? So now that we know... That half of us believe this particular rumor may be true and half of us are kind of like show or don't believe it. However, the majority of us have heard other rumors of Will Smith being on the down low, down low. Yeah, I'm confused as to how one can exist in the other. Y'all ever heard the old saying your mama used to say, if everybody's saying the same thing about you, it must be true. Y'all ever heard that? Okay, I'm going to give you how I, what I think. This is what I think, because I don't know. But I'm going to give you, I'm sorry, I'm reading the chat. I'm going to give y'all what I think, and then I'm going to follow it up with some other things that has transpired. You know what I'm saying? This is what I think. Whatever they said about the beloved Will Smith, whatever they said that nigga did, he did that. That's what I... Listen, Lindas, and listen, Lindas, leave your feelings at the door. I don't care if you liked him in Independence Day. I don't care if you like that Negro and I robot. I don't care if that, that, that time when him and Uncle Phil was crying over there on, on the Fresh Prince, it really touched your soul so much to where you just can't believe something like this will be true. I don't care about none of that. Care your ass. Out the door with your feelings. We about to talk about some real stuff. And we hadn't even gotten started on, started on Dilly. Diddy, I'm sorry. We over here in Philly, over there with uh with the people, with with um, what's them boys' name? Who used to be with uh with New York and them, with, with Jay-Z and them. We over there over there. We in Philly right now. We hadn't gotten to New York. We had not gotten to New York. Stay with me in Philly right quick. West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playgrounds is where I spend most of my days. I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to listen. Again, I'm going to tell y'all one more time. When you come up here, I need y'all to do one simple thing. Wake up! Please, wake up. Thank you. Okay. So now that we've gotten that out the way, it was a it was alleged that Will Smith, his bodyguard came out and said, his bodyguard came out and said that he ended up walking in. Um, yo, you hear an echo, Lanique? Is there an echo?
Man, y'all hear Echo? I don't know. I'm sorry. If you do, I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. I need to plug up. You know, I have microphones. I just don't use them. But look, the bodyguard said he walked in and he found Will Smith bent over with a hump in his back with, and his rump was lifted. But they said, I didn't say it. They said the arch wasn't quite right. That's what they said. I don't know. I wasn't in the hotel room. But they said through Tasha K's interview, he said that he walked in there and Dwayne Martin was pulverizing the rump of Will Smith. Now, I'm going to let y'all hear what the people said, what the what the uh, man said, and then we're going to come back for, uh, for what I got to say. And then I'm going to show y'all a, a few things. And I need y'all, like I said, to wake up. Because this is a real live. I'm telling you, we're not doing no feelings over here. Leave your feelings and your shoes at the door. I don't allow, I don't allow shoes in my house. Please and thank you. Uh, let me get it. Let me hold on. You can buy her 80 cars. You can get her 80 prices. Jada was the woman that everybody wanted. And no, this Will... ain't the one. Hold on. I don't care about Jada. Because we're going to get on her in two seconds. Hold on. That ain't the one. I'm, I, I don't care about Jada. We all know Jada is the source. She is the source of his shit. If it were not for Jada, we would not be here. Speaking of the arch in the back and lifting the rump, let me just share this real quick with you. This how the man said Will Smith was over there. This what they said. I didn't say it. This is what they said. Check it out. Again, I wasn't in the room. This is what they said. The man said he walked in and he seen Will on all fours and he thought it was a pit bull, but it turns out it was just Willard Smith. That's what the man said. I don't know. I wasn't at the room and I don't do bodyguard or security. You know what I'm saying? But neither here nor there. This is what the people had said. I don't want to scroll with y'all looking on Twitter because Twitter might get you, get you uh, wrestled down to the ground on YouTube. Twitter do not play. Hold on. Let me get um this this the video right here. And then we're gonna get into Jada Pinkett or light bulb head ass and what she had to see. Because I'm confused as to why she even talking. Shut up, nigga. He dragging for uh, that nigga said if Jada is used to something the size of a baby league, girl. Okay, here we go. All right, let me share the screen. I need everybody to pay attention. I know y'all probably seen it, but I need it for context for the people who haven't seen it. All right, this is what the man said. Y'all seen how Will was bent over with an arch in his back and his rump was lifted in the air. They said the arch wasn't quite right, though. That's what the girl said. I don't know. Listen to what the man said. And then I saw sexual acts that I when I walked in on. Who'd you walk in on? Him and Dwayne Martin. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Hollywood is the hurry up and, and, and wait game. So three minutes later after them telling me, hey, you got eyes on Will, you got, we, we, we need him to come watch this. So I'm running all over the, the, the studio. He's not in his dressing room. I go to the cafeteria. I'm like, well, but I see his car there. I'm like, where's this guy at? So now I'm holding Dwayne down too. So I have the keys to his dressing room. So I'm like, yo, and they're calling my, my, they, I'm on walkie talkie and they calling my cell phone. Yo, we need to get Will here. And I'm like, yo, kind of fucked down. Like I'm trying to find is like, this is, this is unlike him. Right. So I, I open the um, door to Dwayne dressing room. And that's when I see Dwayne and having anal sex with Will. Let me process that for a second. There was a couch and um, Will was bent over on the couch and Dwayne was standing up, killing him. Murder, like murder. It was murder in there. All right. Well, you heard what the man said. The man said what he said. The man said when he walked in, this is what I'm just trying to tell you what they said. I didn't say it. This is what they said. They said, the man said he walked in, was looking for Will. He didn't know what was happening. He couldn't find Will. He said he was working for Dwayne Martin as well. He said that he couldn't find nobody. But when he walked in and spent the block, he seen what he had seen and he didn't like what he seen. He seen Will hunched over with an arch in his back 
lifting his rump. And I said, oh, that's cool. Now, let me just say this. Let's get into what uh, Jada Pinkett got to say. I will play y'all TMZ. I mean, not TMZ, uh, Breakfast Club, but they over there battling their boss and his drama up there in New York. And we're going to get to them, too. But stand by. Let's play what, what uh, what's her name? With light bulb. E.T. had to see. Let's see what E.T. had to say about the allegations. Because she said it was a shakedown. That's what they all say, girl. What do you think about the allegations? There's like, you know, like so many rumors. Anything you want to say, we still. I know that's right. Thank you, Miss Pinkett. Hi, Miss Pinkett. You look fantastic. All right, good to see you. We got to go. Oh, we got it. Oh, we're black. I'm sorry. What do you think about the allegations? There's like, you know, like so many rumors. Anything you want to say, we still. I know that's right. All right, y'all heard Jada Pinkett, E.T. head ass, E.T. phone home head ass. Y'all heard what she said. She said we suing. Now, she never once said who she was suing, but, but, but because the internet just hates Tasha K so much, everybody automatically assumed that she meant Tasha K. She never said she was suing Tasha K. Will never said he was suing Tasha K. Actually, they said that they were in considerating, they were considerating suing they never said tasha k but the majority of the people was like oh that's good for tasha she don't learn cardi even came out you know how she be because um because boogie down bronx because you know some people they think that you think they will learn but it turns out some people uh how do you say some people never learn and you know i try to pray for people but when I pray for people, they don't, I, I, I just, they don't, they just never learn. So, you know, when, when niggas be, you know, she do that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So she came out in her feelings about it. And I'm saying, girl, this ain't got nothing to do with you. This is Will Smith. But she came out and said what she had to say or whatever. And I'm trying to figure out why the internet is more mad at Tasha K than Jada, Jada Pinkett Smith. Because she has been dragging him, not Tasha K. Mind you, that man came on her platform and said, oh, this is what I experienced. Tasha K didn't say that. So why is it that Tasha K is being held accountable? And I know some people going to be like, well, it's your platform. Whatever say on your platform, you got to do 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 da 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 do 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 da 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 To an extent, yes. But if that was the case, Everybody in my comment, if you put your, your uh, opinions in my comment and because it's my platform, that would mean I'm responsible. That's bullshit. If that man came up there and said he, he walked in on um on uh, Will Smith getting ramrodded, that ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm not saying it's gonna have nothing to do with it, but as far as lawsuit purposes, he's that that's not that that's not on Tasha K. She didn't say it, she's interviewing somebody who's giving their experience. Thank you, uh, Kimmy Doll, Hawaii by way of Long Island, New York. Let's talk about it, girl. I ain't got to y'all yet, but thank you for the super chat, Kimmy Doll. Look, I want to show y'all something because do y'all know the story of Will Smith getting the the um the the Fresh Prince uh role? Do does it is anybody familiar with how Will Smith or how did it come about where he got the role of the Fresh Prince? Thank you, Queen T. She said, the skeleton falling out of the closet at the end of 2023. I'm here for all of it. Listen, this is the age of Aquarius. All the tea's about to be spilled, Fed. All of them. All of them about to be spilled. But look, are y'all familiar with how Will Smith got the role of the Fresh Prince? They said, allegedly, they said that it was spilled. Well, it was spilled. He got the tea. I mean, he got the uh the, the role because they offered it originally to somebody else. Y'all, please hit the like button, please. He he it was originally offered to another rapper. Are y'all familiar? I know my people from New York. I know y'all know who this is, but are any of you guys familiar with MC Shan? MC Shan, MC Shan is a rapper from the 90s. And he was originally offered the role of the Fresh Prince. This is prior to Will Smith coming up to Highland, West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. You know what I'm saying? The role was offered to MC Shan. 
MC Shan. Thank you, Ariel, girl. I did it myself, girl. Mm -hmm. I just redid them. Thank you, girl. But look, this ain't about me. This is about Will. So the role was originally offered to MC Shan. MC Shane said that there were some questionable things that they were requiring him to do. So he said, ah, ah, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey, no spam with cheese. No. But let's get into what MC Shane had to say about the whole situation. Because MC Ann, MC Ann, MC Shane uh, had a lot to discuss about this. Hold on. Let me get it up. Let me pull it up. All right, let me pause you up, MC Shane. Hold on, stand by. Now, he all as hell now. You know, life done took a toll on him. He said he ain't had shit since he turned down the road. And don't get me started on Will Smith, she knows. Y'all know, I mean, not Will Smith, Quincy Jones. Y'all know the, the rumor in Hollywood, and I'm saying rumor, but I believe it. But the rumor in Hollywood that Quincy Jones is the biggest ram rider. You think Dwayne Martin, they said, is the one. They said Quincy Jones. I just say this. They said, they said that uh, when, what's his name? Tomorrow will bring a better you, better me. Can we talk? Tevin Campbell. They said Tevin Campbell been messed up ever since he went over there. That's what they said. I don't know. Nobody ever asked me, could we talk? So I don't know. But let's get into the video of what MC Shan had to say about how Will Smith got into his role as the Fresh Prince. Let's go look at it. Let me make it bigger. All right. Right one in the pinnacle when I'm getting ready to try and put it in my ass. So yes, I will repeat that story. I was up for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I was signed to Warner Brothers. Benny Medina, look at my records. All of a sudden, Benny Medina, my executive producer. I'm like, what the f***? Who the f***? Nigga, Todd. What the fuck am my executive producer? I don't know this mother And then all of a sudden, now we out on my California road. Shantae took the credit card and went f***ing ham. <laughs> They're looking at me, but I know them funny moves, you understand? And so I looked him in his face and I say, yo, you was a bundle of sticks. Mm. And from that day, the whole thing went downhill. And like I say, you couldn't imagine anyone else as Fresh Prince, but you couldn't imagine Shan as being mother six degrees of separation. And that's no disrespect to my and Will. Oh, yeah, me and Will, Will first show he ever did was with me. I know Will like a mother Charlie Mac, all that shit. And I'm saying my story. If y'all don't want to hear it, too motherfucking bad. It is what it is. All I'm saying is, I know what I'd have had to go through to go through again. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at the internet right now and I'm seeing stories that exposing Will Smith and I'm seeing my name tagged in it saying Shan said it a minute ago. I was telling my story, telling how Benny Medina wanted to slip his my ass and I wasn't having it. That's the reason why my career went the way it went. I got dropped off of Warner Brothers right when in the pinnacle when they get ready to try and put it in my ass. I told him you, okay? But now you got these stories coming out of people that firsthand witnessed this shit. That wasn't my thing. My thing was telling my story. It just so happened that Will Smith is a part of my story. Because where I didn't take the next thing you noticed was six degrees of separation. And however the situation went down or whatever, I have nothing to do with it. Whatever people do with their body, that's their own thing. And we all should mind our business. Yeah, we may not like it and shit, but it's not our thing. Mind your business. So what I say is... I told my story just to show you early in the game how these were trying to slip up in your ass. Mm -hmm. And I was a young, light-skinned mother that they just loved them little light-skinned. When you was light-skinned, you went to jail, they love you there, and they love your ass in the record companies, too. And so all I'm saying is when that Benny Medina wanted to slip up in my ass and I told him, you, they were trying to make me the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, don't fuck you. Will was next up. Picture of six degrees of separation has mm. been my first movie. F you, I'm not even going to pretend to act a homosexuality. F you, goodbye. 
leave people business alone. So what? It, it looked like you a snitch now because you was privy to shit. You know what I'm saying? Which means that we really can't trust people. The people that you think you can trust right now, in a minute, they're going to flip on you. Stop doing all that shit. That shit is dirty. That's fucked up. All right. Let's get him off of here. Now, that was MC Shan, okay? Uh, just for for our reference purposes, let's see what MC Shan looked like back when he said the people was coming look for him. Now, I, I let me say this. I believe his story one trillion percent. But I also know that MC Shan is saving himself because he knows that there's certain things he can and cannot say. And he refuses to be one of those people who gets caught up in physical attraction. Not like that, but you know what I mean? Like he don't want to get caught up in no BS because in this industry, which we're going to get into in a second, but in this industry, I'm sorry, there's this thing where it is known that you will not cross the wrong people. Let me show you what MC Shan used to look like. I fucking hate when I do that. All right, hold on. I don't need this one. Let me show this. Let's, let's look at MC Shan. This was MC Shan back in the day. For your references, hold on. That's for your references. This is what MC Shan looked like back in the gap when they wanted him to be the um, the fresh prince of Bel Air. I don't know how they was going to say in West. Where he from? What part of New York he from, y'all? What part of New York is MC Shan? Thank you so much, Jamise Taylor, for the super chat. She said, I love you so much, voodoo doll. That's Joe's boo. Oh, thank you. I think I read this one because I read Kim. And if I didn't, thank you again. Um, Queen T, thank you. She said, the skeleton falling out of the closet at the end of 23, 2023. I'm here for it all. Absolutely. 440 vibes with San Marie. Thank you so much for the super chat. I'm just tired of it all. All of it. I'm numb. Will, will. Remember when Jada said she didn't need Will. She always crapped on him. That's why I'm confused as to why the people is so mad with Tasha K. But okay. And then thank you so much, Sonya, for the super sticker. Now, let's go back here y'all see mc shan this was mc shan back in the, i want to say maybe early 90s i guess or maybe late 80s because you know they be shopping this shit long before they get to it he refused the role because he alleges that they were requiring payment from the anal ex, uh, section of his his body and he didn't want no parts as he should not but let me just say this Shortly after Will Smith got into his role as the Fresh Prince, he had his breakout movie role, and it was called Six Degrees of Separation. In that movie of Six Degrees of Separation, Will Smith played a gay, undercover gay man who, I guess, made him, he lied and said he was uh, Sidney Poitier's son, but it turns out in the movie, even though it wasn't as graphic where you can see it, they said, remember, I didn't say it, but they said that uh, it was, it kind of gave them a little bit of this. Hold on. This is what they said. Now, I seen the movie, but I'm just telling you what they said. It kind of reminded them of when they saw it. They said, this is what it was given. That's what they said. Now, we all know, well, no, we don't all know because some people are very oblivious to what's actually going on in the industry. Let me just say this. Y'all, if everybody's saying the same thing, if every single person is saying the exact same thing, why is it so hard to believe? Is it because this is you like the person? Tell the truth. Tell a guy the truth. Is the reason that people don't want to uh, believe certain rumors because they like the person? And we're going to get into Diddy, but why is this untrue why is this so far-fetched when we've been hearing this over and over again i did a whole consensus most people in the chat have heard a gay rumor about will smith we all know that uh he don't satisfy jada her words not us not mine that uh she had an addiction an actual addiction that he could not um get he could not help her with they said i didn't say it but they said he working with a vienna sausage they also said that he had to go down there to somebody to help him figure out um how to to please his woman but they also said that she was his beard again this is all alleged i do not know 
Keisha K said, you never heard of the rumor before mine. You must be over there in Jamaica, girl. Cause see, oh, see, that must be over there in Jamaica. Cause in in in, in uh America, we been hearing about this girl. Where you been at? It, yes, it's J Dub. It was the baby league. Hold on, let me find you. It was the baby league. The ba it was the baby league for me. I ain't gonna lie. When that nigga said a baby leg, bitch, do y'all know how big a baby? You know how long and fat a baby leg is, girl. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out why this is so far fetched. And Jada up there hollering, she gonna sue, bitch. Stop with suing yourself, bitch. You've been dragging a nigga for the last six months. Now all of a sudden, you wanna come up here hollering, slander, slander. He been trying to shake us down. Bitch, you shaking him down. Let that man get a little piece. Y'all got to be strong. Listen to me. Jada, you're wrong. You have been dragging Will harder than anybody in the world, bitch. I used to think that Will Smith was this masculine, big old, like, he'll, you know, take you in the room, throw you on the bed, woot the woot the wham wham. Now that Jada has been running her, her dick suckers, I don't have no, I, now that I look at him, I just, it's almost like, it's almost like looking at an, uh, an incompetent uh, man. And I don't like that. You done fucked up all my years, Jada. You could have kept that to yourself. We didn't need to know the nigga be bent over like this, allegedly, they said, but we didn't need to know that. But Jada insisted on telling us. But my thing is with you, Jada, is why is you mad? Because the bodyguard won't get his little piece. Let him get his little piece. And let me tell this to all y'all who have doubts that this is a real story. Let me tell y'all something. The industry, hold on, let me get up here so you can see me better. Hold on. The industry is nothing like your life, my life, nobody else's life. Let me read the super chat. Thank you, Danielle, with three grandkids. She said, hey, doll, happy Friday. I'm on the road getting my baby from school. I just wanted to send my support, uh-huh, and I will watch when I get home to my TV and wine, as you should. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Uh, the industry is nothing like you and I. Their lives are nothing like you and I. That's why uh what is his name willow and Jaden are so freaking weird them the two weirdest kids i ever seen in my life weird because they have different experiences did y'all not hear oh uh, will not will Jada Jada get online talking about her son turned her on the psychedelics bitch do you understand if i done went to my mom and said my take these shrooms it's gonna make you feel better my mama would have bet the piss out of me but in the industry, you can go to your mama and say, hey, my snort a little is cocaine. It's going to help you with your pain. And she said, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, they live, they different. They different. You had Jade, not Jade, and Willow was writing letters to Tupac at about six. It was a lot going on. And I just feel like I don't understand why y'all think this is far-fetched. I believe it. Not just because of MC Shan, but because of the multiple, 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 multiple rumors that I've heard before regarding Will Smith. Keep in mind, he's already said that they don't really be together. Like, they married, but hell, they've been separate damn near the whole time. He works, so she ain't hardly with him. Like, I don't understand what y'all, like, what, what more do you want from me? Like, what more do y'all need to hear about Will? For real. I, I'm really curious. What more is it that you need to hear about Will? Because Will, listen, like I said, it's the age of Aquarius. If y'all could jump off the porch and believe this P. Diddy shit, I'm confused as to why y'all don't believe this. Oh, because he played in, oh, what's one of the movies y'all like? Which one of the movies niggas like from Will Smith? Which one of the movies niggas like from uh, Will Smith? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. What's the one where he's, when he's stuck in there running from the zombies and all of that? It, because Uncle Phil was on there. He was gay as two left shoes, too. God bless the dead. Bad boys. You know, y'all love a good bad boys. You know what I'm saying? He Look, Uncle Phil was gay as two left shoes. You know, niggas love bad boys. Uncle Phil was too gay as left shoes. The jury is still out on Carlton. Girl, Moonchild ain't no nigga in the history of niggadom like the Wild Wild West. I ain't even gonna lie. Y'all, now y'all doing the most now. Wild Wild West, come on now. Y'all got to be trooper to yourselves. I Am Legend is another one the niggas love. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Independence Day, that's another one. But that girl said the Wild Wild West. Girl, I know you lying. I 
I know you learn to me. Girl, please. Wild, wild west. Bitch, I, to be completely honest, I don't even think I really saw it for real. I might have seen it somewhere and wasn't even paying attention, but I don't even think I really saw it. Girl, bye. Ain't nobody worried about no damn wild, wild west. Girl, y'all do the most. Men in Black. Was that a nigga movie? Was Men in Black a nigga movie or was it like a box office movie? Because, you know, we got our movies and then we got the movies everybody like. You know, was Men in Black a nigga movie? I must have missed that one. Enemy of the State was a good one. Oh, Pursuit of Happiness had the niggas all in their feelings. Every nigga thought they could go sleep on the, on the street with their baby and they're going to make it to, mi to millionaire. They still got niggas on the street to this day behind Pursuit of Happiness, girl. Yo, listen, what I'm saying is y'all are sitting up here acting like this shit is impossible when the fact is it's more probable than possible let alone impossible these people live different lives than you and i now i'm not saying it ain't no niggas in the hood that's bent over like will let me put him back up here hold on i'm not saying let me get him bigger no let me get him bigger than that hold on i'm not saying it's not a nigga in your hood over there like this take a look that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it ain't the hardest nigga in your hood somewhere looking like this. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the level of the arch is different. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, A, thou are holding steady. Listen, listen, Lindas, listen, Larrys, listen, Lenards, and listen, uh, Leos or whatever. I don't know. I'm trying to tell y'all a story with some truth in it. I'm not saying it ain't a nigga. The hardest nigga on your block ain't over here looking like Will. Wait, let me, which way should I point? This way, this way. I'm not saying that it ain't the hardest nigga on your block who kick everybody ass, who done killed, popped up 55 niggas. Uh, I'm not saying that he don't be like this. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is y'all acting like this shit is impossible because he did bad boys. Cause the nigga played in uh what what's the other nigga movie y'all like Bad Boys? Cause the nigga played in um Pursuit of Happiness. Cause the nigga was sleeping in the subway on the movie. Why is that? Why is that? Look at let's talk about it, girl. Y'all is crazy. Let's talk about it. See, he gotta put a little more, a little. He gotta put that back down a little more. That's what I was. You know, that's only for the professionals, though. You must be one of the professionals. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was thinking that, too. I was like, he got to, and he got to put his, like, his his neck part area has got to be down a little more to where when his, like, how the arch supposed to go is, like, if this, the back side, and this is head, like, the back side supposed to be like that, and the head kind of, like, got to come up like a snake. You know what I'm saying? So where that dip right here, that dip kind of like, like a U. You know what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? The you gotta be in there. He see he working with a um upside down M lowercase. He need a U. He need a capital U in that back. You know what I'm saying? But that's Philly. I need Philly to come get your people. Uh, Philly. They said that this is all alleged. Let me say this. But they said that. Lord, I'm trying to not, I don't want to get shot down to the ground, girl. I'm going to keep that to myself. But shout out to Gilly and Wallow. Let's move on. Let's get into Diddy. Okay. Shout out to Gilly and Wallow. Shout out to Philly. Shout out to everybody from West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. Uh, shout out to, 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 to the city of Brother. Lee love, not sisterly bitch, not not neighborly bitch, brother Lee love. Yay. Mm -hmm. The city of brother. Do you hear what I'm saying? Is this thing on? Is this thing on? The city of brotherly love. 
I wonder why that is. Let's see. Let's see. Why do? Why would they name it this? The city of brotherly love. Why would they name it that? Oh, girl, that don't even make no sense. Looking at this image, now that's just disrespectful. Why would they name it the city of brotherly love? I need somebody from Philly to tap in. Tap in, Philly. Even though what we do is wrong. Not, the songs don't even add up. Oh, my God. Even though what we do is wrong. Girl, come on now, Philly. Philly. The best thing came out of y'all was Jill Scott. And they said they dragging her too, girl. What is going on with Philly? Come on now, Philly. First 48, the city of brotherly love. Somebody put that in the chat. First 48, the city of brotherly love. Girl, y'all can't make this shit up. The, sh the jokes write themselves. I don't even have to say nothing, girl. The jokes write themselves, girl. Come on now, Philly. 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 Look at Angela talking about everybody so nice in Philly. You see why, Angie? Angie! Angie! X will... Look at the photo and ask why the, why the brother's so nice in Philly. You know what, J-Dub? You might be on to something. When somebody said they put cheese whiz on them so-called great American Phillies, I said throw the whole city away. Say what I said. Say what I said. I, that might be fucking with them. It, it, the, the cheese whiz probably go to their brain and they, it, they forget and then they get the, oh, I dropped my keys. And the next thing you know, the city of brotherly love, even though what we do is wrong. Even though what we do is wrong. I didn't say it. That's what uh, Freeway said. I didn't say that. Even though what we do is wrong. Shout out Gillian Wallow, but let's move on. Um, Yeah, Philly, y'all come to the congregation. Come to the front. It was a couple of y'all up in here hollering y'all from Philly. Philly John, you got to get up here. Philly, Philly John, you got to get up here. Philly, you wrong for the cheese whiz. No, y'all wrong for the cheese whiz. We don't eat that shit. I, mean, I never even seen a can of cheese in New Orleans, so I don't know. I never seen it. Maybe I passed by it was next to the roach spray. I don't know. But what I'm trying to tell y'all is, even though what we do is wrong. First 48, the city of brotherly love. Girl, y'all got to be strong. Y'all got to be strong, girl. Cheese whiz and brotherly love. Y'all taking L's. I thought New York take L's. Oh, y'all almost, y'all almost. No, y'all ain't bad as New York. New York stay on the docket every day, girl. Um, yeah, girl. <sighs> My city don't even respect our sports team. Anybody can get it, girl. That's what they said. That's what they said. I didn't say it. That's what they said. And Johns, that's why they call, why they, why y'all call the people Johns? Johns, Johns, Johns. Let me read a super chat while Will stay in position. Get into position. Get in formation, Will. Stay right there. Let me read a super chat. Um, Thank you, No Teeth, for the super sticker. I appreciate you. No Teeth? Oh, that's cute. Do you really not have no teeth? Are you from Philly? No teeth? Please don't be from Philly or New York. Lord, please. I don't care if you from Zamunda. Just please don't be from Philly or New York. Not tonight. Tonight ain't y'all night, Fat. Not tonight. Thank you, Nikki Nicole. She said, did you already talk about Will call Jada and Mark Anthony getting on on the couch? Will walk in and be Jada real bad. Now, that's what I heard. Now, these are all alleged uh, situations. Um, they said that he walked in on her with Mark Anthony and he was mad. They said because he he thought he was supposed to be like this in front of Mark Anthony. Y'all see him? They said, but when he came in and saw Jada was like that in front of Mark Anthony, they say it sent him because he was like, this is the city. I am from the city of brotherly love, bitch. Freeway said, even though what we do is wrong, I still get a pass to pop this bald head bitch upside her head. And they said, I ain't said, but they said that he ended up, he commenced to golfing uh, E.T. Jada upside the head like Krishan golf 
Mr. Patty Pie. That's what they said. I don't know. They say he dragged her out there like Ike did Tina in the movie. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not from the city of brotherly love. I'm just telling you what they said. This is all alleged, okay? This is what they said. So y'all keep an eye on this in the, the city of brotherly love. Thank you so much, Nikki Nicole. Um, Who else we got up here? Thank you. How you say your name? Shaquilla. Thank you so much for the super chat. Let me see what you got to say, girl. She said, it make you think why DJ Jazzy Jeff separated himself from him. And Will got famous. DJ Jazzy got left behind. Because DJ Jazzy said what he wasn't going to do is the brotherly love pose. I don't blame him. Right now, when he takes a number two, it all comes out as one whole thing. You know, it's, it's not coming out in sections. Shout out to, to DJ Jazzy Jeff. Sh shout out. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I've seen him on, DJ and his parents just don't understand. But that's all right. Shout out to DJ Jazzy Jeff. He a real nigga. DJ Jazzy Jeff a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? He said, nah, Will, you got it, bro. Just throw me a little something when you get your little coins. And he said, all right, I got you. Shout out to you. Thank you, Shaquilla. No T said, thank you again for the super chat. South side of Chicago. Oh, yeah, that's Chirac. That's from the hood. That's what people go in and come up missing. That's what they said. I don't know. I don't be in Chicago. I, I don't be at Big Mama House on Soul Food, but that's what they said. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Auntie Sadie, for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Y'all really be showing the girl love, showing the doll love. Okay. Now that we got, oh, somebody, Jay Dub said, Jazzy Jeff wasn't down with the cheese whiz. Exactly. The city of brother love. Even though what we do is wrong. Let's get off of Will. Will, are you ready to get up or do we want to? Do we need to keep you here, Will, or are you ready to get up? Will. Will. Oh, thank you, Lali. She said for Saint Street. Oh, thank you so much. Girl, St. Pete on my new blanket. I almost killed him, girl. Lord, him, I had to do it. I had to pray. I had to pray. I had to do that. Alima said, hold on. What Alima said? Stop talking about my city. Girl, I didn't say nothing about him. I'm just talking about Will in the city of Brother Love. That's all I said. I don't, I don't be in Philly. I don't eat cheese with. So I didn't. What you want me to do? I don't eat no cheese whiz. I didn't, I didn't even know cheese come in a can. What you want me to do? Alima, Alima. I don't even eat cheese steaks like that. What? Is, I'm not from West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. That ain't me. I don't. We didn't even have playgrounds in New Orleans. Girl, we didn't have no playgrounds. We had a basketball court with no backboard, barely the rim. The rim was bent up, no net. And you be lucky if you could shoot the ball because the niggas were shooting blickies. You know what I'm saying? Girl, we ain't got no playground. So that ain't me. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just showing y'all the picture. You know what I mean? Kalima. Are you from the city of brotherly, brotherly love? You eat cheese out of a can. You tell me. What is going on with the people in the Will Smiths and them? Alima, 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 you remind me of a Philly story, growing up in West Philly, we'll arching like a movie star, oh, Alima, Alima, Alima. I don't eat cheese out the can, fat, so I can't really see. You know what I'm saying? But neither here nor there. I will say shout out to the city of brotherly love. Even though what we do is wrong. Shout out to Alima in the city of brotherly love. Not sisterly, not neighborly, ho. Not sisterly, bitch. Not neighborly, ho. Brotherly love. Brother love. Brotherly love. That's what they said. I didn't say it. That's what they said. Like I said, we don't we don't have cheese in the can in New Orleans. We don't have no playgrounds, and we don't have no cheese in the can. All we got is a black top with graffiti on the floor, and uh, niggas shooting dice, niggas shooting blickies, and niggas smoking crack and weed and, 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 and stuff like that. We don't have no playgrounds like that. You know what I'm saying? Creative Ambition said, because there's no better love. Oh! 
There'll never be a better, never be, be a better love. Say there'll never be, be a better love since. We are lying here. Oh, the, the lyrics right they self. Shout out. Oh, man. Shout out to Switch. Lord have mercy. Oh, Alima. Alima, you opened this can. Alima, Alima. You remind me of a West Philly story. Alima, this is all your fault. Now, I was getting ready to take Will off of here. And, I, and I'm about to get Will up off of here. But before I get Will off of here, I need y'all to take one more look at Willard. Y'all see Willard? Do y'all see Willard? The city of brotherly love. And they say, even though what we do is wrong. He does, don't he, Groovy? He looks so comfortable in that. Oh, girl, look like he done been there before. I've been here before. I can feel it. I've been here before. Uh -huh. I've been here before. I can feel it. The song, girl, I can't even sing a song without the jokes writing themselves. Girl, y'all got to stop. Stop, Philly. I wasn't supposed to drag y'all this long, Philly. I was not so, I was supposed to get in and get out on y'all, but y'all just keep. Come on now, I've been here before. I can feel it. Girl, come on now, Philly. Lord have mercy. Philly! Philly! I think it's the cheese in the can. If you ask me, if y'all would have never ate that cheese in the can, y'all wouldn't call Philly the city of brotherly love, and Will wouldn't be over there looking like this. That. That's y'all fault. Stop eating that fucking cheese out the can. Do y'all hear me? Stop eating that goddamn cheese out the can. Eat your cheese out the pack like the rest of the world. Stop eating that goddamn cheese out the can. When you go get you another Philly cheesesteak and that, that, that man come up there and tell you what would you like on your sandwich, you better not say no cheese out the can. Tell that nigga you don't eat cheese no more. You're lactose intolerant. We don't want to hear it no more. We don't want to see it no more. We don't want to find it no more. Will, get off of your knees and get off of here. Please, Lord, we got to get off Philly. We, Philly wasn't even supposed to last this long. Philly wasn't even supposed to last this long. Girl, y'all do the most, girl, over there in Philly. Y'all do the most. Philly was not supposed to last this long. But what's the moral to the story? Wait, before I get a moral to the story, let me go ahead and read my little super chats or whatever the case may be. Uh-huh. Where I'm at? Thank you, Michelle Elam, for the super chat. I'm from Chicago also, Voodoo. Love you, girl. Oh, yeah. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Who else? Did I miss one? Thank you, Melanie Poppin, for the super sticker. Thank you. I appreciate it. Did I get you, Auntie Sadie? Thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate y'all. All right. Now, let's get into Diddy. You know, before I get into Diddy, let me just say this. I can remember the first time I seen Diddy. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was Biggie Smalls. AKA B.I.G. Notorious B.I.G. This is where I fell in love with little Kim. This is when Kim was my color. Not this Kim. See, if you if you knew, you don't know that Kim used to be my color. This is when me and Kim looked alike. You know what I'm saying? This the old Kim, not the new Kim. This the black Kim, not the white Kim. This the black Kim. Um, I miss you, Tita. Tita said, I missed her. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm looking at the chat on both sides. Hold on. Thank you, Tita Hot Commodity. Thank you. Hey, Voodoo Doll, did you get the TMZ video of Rock? Girl, what did she do, Tita? Tita. Girl, I didn't even want to do Rock today. Baltimore, you know what? Up north, y'all taking licks up north. Up north taking L's. Baltimore, Philly, even though what we do is wrong, everybody taking an L. What's going on up there in up north? Is it snowing yet? That's what it's got to be the snow. Is it snowing yet in, in up north? Anybody Virginia in above? Is it snowing? And don't tell me Virginia is the South. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Y'all ain't in the South, girl. Girl, bye. Uh, Philly ain't, Virginia is not the South. Virginia is the lower of North. Thank you, Dree Loving. Thank you for your super chat. She said, Voodoo, you're a real one. Love your channel. Oh, thank you. All right, let's get into New York. 
I need everybody. Y'all was in the chat early deep. Y'all was deep in the chat earlier. I need all my people from New York. Concrete jungle where niggas beat you. He might e even pop you. Niggas from New York. They say that nigga might sign you. Next thing he might blind you. Let's hear it for New York, New York, New York. Now, when Alicia Keys said that, I didn't know that she really meant those words. I thought it was just, you know how people be writing songs and they just need stuff to rhyme. You know what I'm saying? But I did not know that she really meant that. New York, tap in, New York. He from New York City, boss. Tap in, New York. New York. Y'all been off the docket all week. I ain't said nothing about New York. I did not open my mouth about New York. Matter of fact, somebody tried to throw y'all under the bus one of them days. And I said, nope. Nope, nope, nope. I said, nope. This is not about New York. New York got the week off. The week off. That's what I said. That's what I said. I said, nope. New York got the week off. Girl, Demina, I ain't from New York. I'm from New Orleans. Girl, I ain't from no New York. Do I sound like I'm from New York? I know when I be saying the boogie down Bronx. Girl, I ain't from no New York, girl, please. The way they been taking L's, girl, please. At least our biggest L is baby, and he only pop out every now and again, bitch. New York can't catch a break. Do you hear me? New York, every time the sun come up, is some new shit, with the, especially out that Boogie Down Bronx. No shade to the people uh, from the Boogie Down Bronx, but I'm just saying, girl, New York can't catch a break. Bitch, if a break was a fastball and they had Babe Ruth at the other end of the pitcher, New York couldn't catch it. Girl, y'all got to be strong. New York. New York. No, but you from the Bronx? What is going Is it snowing up there? Tell the truth. Is it? Who from up there? Is it snowing? That's what it's got to be. If Jen say it's hot, girl. Maybe that's what it is, Jen. It's too hot. Y'all not used to that. By this time, y'all building snowmans and shit. So maybe that's what it is. The heat. Got y'all jacked up up there. You know what I'm saying? KG said the New York, yup. That's what it is. Y'all normally be up there uh, building a, a snowman. And he gonna come to life and, and pop y'all upside the head. Thank you, Caramelly Mel. Well, we'll put the cheese on the che in the cheese steak. That's what they said. That's what they said. Arthur Empress said, hold on, what happened? Where the check, girl? Arthur Empress said, we don't claim anything past Jersey. If we are from New York, that is not considered the North for most of us. Girl, bye. Girl, I love you down, Arthur Empress. Love you down to the ground. But New York is Rochester. New York is everywhere in that little crazy shaped state. Wherever the lady up there with the light like this, especially up there, you know the green lady? You know the green lady that have the light up like this? Y'all y'all ever seen the green lady? You might not have been up there. I seen the whole in real life. But if you haven't been to New York, they got a green lady who got a, a torch in her hand like this. And they said she keep the light on like Motel 6 because they said it's for everybody to come on in except niggas. That's what they said. I don't know. I don't have no light in front of my door. So I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Argentina, the lady, the green hole. The green hole with the light like this. And she got a little something in her hand like this. Like she reading off her iPad or something, off a book or something. Hear ye, hear ye. Everybody welcome except niggas. Yeah, that lady. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all got to know what I'm talking about. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. But look, go ahead on, New York. New York. Uh, New York. You know, they said when I let me get back to how I first met Diddy. So when when Lil Kim looked at like me, oh Lil Kim, not new Lil Kim, not this Kim. This Kim is a clone. I don't know who this is. This Kim, she a whole new bitch. You know what I'm saying? But um, oh Lil Kim looked like this, and I always thought, wow, her flow is very similar to. Biggest. So I used to think Biggie writing that shit. And to this day, I still believe he was. But I also believe she have some some sort of talent where she could write it herself. But when I never forget, when I seen Biggie, what video it was, I don't want to lie. 
Uh, it probably was before this one, but I'm gonna go with this one. I don't know what they want from me. It's like the more money we come across, the more problems we see. And come to find out, it was Kelly Price, big fat funky nasty cheesy ass. Y'all remember that? But they ain't want to show her because she was big fat funky nasty and cheesy. Y'all remember that? Yeah, I remember seeing this nigga in his shiny suit. And I said, now, who is this nigga? He ain't had a verse. He ain't said nothing. He ain't did nothing. But he all in the videos. In my Suge Knight voice. All in the studio. I'm like, who is this nigga? And show as I got a nose on my face. At the time, they used to call him Puff Daddy. That's what they say. First of all, any nigga who have other niggas calling him anything that say daddy, Red flag. New York, get up here, New York. Is y'all in here, New York? New York, are y'all in here? I have questions. I have questions, comments, and concerns, New York. Oh, especially A.R. Especially when that nigga's behind it. Take that, take that, take take what, nigga? What are you asking me to take? What are you, uh, what's, what's his name? What are you asking me to take? I need clarification. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't talking to me. But what is you asking me to take? This? What is you asking me to take? I need, I need answers. What was Diddy saying when he was saying, take that? What was Diddy saying? Take that, take that, take that, take that. What are you talking about, Puff Daddy? What are you talking about, Daddy? Uh-uh, ain't no pause. Ain't no pause. He ain't say pause. Mm -mm. This, is, this is a play. This ain't a pause. This is, keep the party going. What was Diddy talking about? Well, we come to find out, you know, like, just like, um, <laughs> look at Queen T talking about, they took it all right, girl. Y'all is crazy. Look, <laughs> y'all is crazy. Look, just like, it's crazy. Wait, what, what happened? It's crazy saying that the fake Will Smith bent over like this who the fake will smith so the people behind him uh on on they um on their knees is they fake too come on new york i mean philly is you from philly what's her name let me go see your name fake because i need to see i need to see i need to look you like a man in your face like like birdman see hold on let me scroll up i need to see your face sabrina are you from Philly? Just say yay or nay. You ain't got to say nothing else. Are you from Philly, Sabrina? Sabrina, are you from Philly? Got to be from Philly. She from the city of brotherly love, too. They say the sisters don't get no love. They say the sisters out the city of brotherly love don't get no love. Sabrina. Are you from New York? You got to be from New York then. She got to be from New York. Sabrina, you from New York and you mad that Diddy was saying take that and then Will did like this? Girl, bye. Let's move on. Look. Um, so where was I? Uh, Sabrina laughing. <laughs> Shout out to Sabrina. Sabrina, you from New York for real. Just put a one in the chat. Just say one. You can wait five minutes. If I see you say one, I'm going to know where you from. I ain't going to tell nobody. I'm going to just see it. I ain't going to tell nobody. Just, just put one if you from New York. Put two if you from Philly. If you from one, wait five minutes. If you from New York, put the one. Wait five minutes to do it. So the chat going to be the forgot. And put two if you from Philly. But wait five minutes. The chat going to be the forgot. Don't worry about it. This going to be between me and you, Sabrina. Don't tell. I'm not going to tell nobody. Just one or two. One New York, two Philly. That's all. But anyway, um... You misunderstanding what she was saying. Anyway, look. Let's move on. Get well off here. We we don't but you will. So I knew at that moment when when I remember back in the day. Let's get serious, y'all. I remember back in the day. Um, <laughs> Shaquilla said New York can't catch a city like uh like uh Florida can't. So I've always heard horrible rumors about Diddy. I've always heard them. I've always heard that Diddy. Has um oh yes, Karika. Yes, they are. The secret is out. The secret is out. They said that Cassie, y'all remember Cassie? I've been waiting so long. Now you done answer my call. 
Not knowing what I know now, because remember, I was there. Excuse me. I was there. And I remember saying, this is a bop ass song, but this okay, same. But I didn't know she was scoring Diddy. So at the time, I found out later, but at the time, I didn't know that she was scoring Diddy. Now, she done since left him. She'd been with the nigga for 38 years. You know what I'm saying? They said he met her when she was 19. And let me say this too for the people in the chat who gonna sit up here and act like um that was uncommon back in the 90s or early 2000s, you kept. I remember when I was in high school, them niggas used to um wait outside my high school, them grown ass niggas used to wait outside my high school to see the young girls come out so that they could um talk to them and deal with them or whatever the case may be. You know who else I'm about to fuck your head up with and he ain't got nothing to do with this, but let me just say this, all these people who running around here, all these men in the industry running around here with these churns, and we gonna get to them. Uh, they all suspect to me. Who do I mean? What am I talking about? Um, Jermaine Dupree is just suspect. I ain't saying he did nothing. I'm just saying it's 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 suspect. It's very suspect. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen a bunch of grown ass niggas around a bunch of churn. Y'all gotta make this make sense. Let me pull up the article though. So y'all, so we can see what's going on over there in uh New York. New York, y'all got to do better with y'all lives over there in New York. New York, y'all been having a lot going on. And y'all just come, y'all just refuse New York. New York, he from New York City, boss. What's going on out there in New York? In this game, now they they did have an Aubrey go you Aubrey O'Day go sit your let me choose my words wisely because I don't want to get popped upside the head. Aubrey, go sit your ass down, please. Nobody is listening to you. Not one person. Nobody, and I mean nobody is listening to Aubrey, bitch. You done went bought a new face. You then bought a new body, girl. We don't care. Go sit down. Go lay, go lay down, Aubrey. Go lay down. All right, let's get into this article. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read some of it for the people who do not know. If you sleeping under a rock, Diddy has been accused of violence, DV, uh, the stuff that sound that rhyme with tape, and all of that stuff. All right, let's read this article, and then I'm going I'm to come back and say what I got to see. Hold on. Let me share the screen. We're going to read the article. All right, so here it is. This is from yesterday. I seen it happening, but y'all, I be trying to unplug from this shit. I was in taking knowledge yesterday. I was, I heard it, I seen it, but I wasn't really on it like that. I watched everybody get up there and do their numbers. I ain't, at some, I gotta prioritize my mental health. I can't be doing this shit all day because I don't do this when I'm I, when I'm not on here doing this doing this for y'all. I be on some other shit. So I was on there. Somebody found me on another page that ain't got shit to do with the shit I be talking about. And I told, I said, girl, I told you I be everywhere, girl. I be everywhere when it comes to these this knowledge. But look. So this is Diddy and Cassie. If y'all don't know Cassie, Cassie had the song, It's Me and You. Now, I've been waiting. Think I'm going to make a move now. Baby, tell me if you like it. Tell me if you like it. I remember that song used to come on. That blue, 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 blue. Blue, blue, blue. That, that gets you out your seat. That's still about in 2023. Matter of fact, Cassie, did he give you your rights back, girl, so you can go get your song and bop it up the street, girl? But anyway, this is Cassie. Cassie met Diddy when she was 19, and Cassie is coming out with allegations, really serious allegations against Diddy of essay, uh, tape, the stuff that rhymed with tape, uh, violence, DV, all types of things, girl. And they said Diddy round up canceling stuff with Deleon and all type of stuff because the shit is getting real. This is the age of Aquarius. Before I get up here, before I get up here and show y'all what I want y'all to see, because we got to get serious now, I just need one baby from... This industry shit is real. I know y'all don't want to believe it. I know Diddy makes songs to make the everybody feel good. 
I know Diddy done uh, stole from millions. No, let me just say this. Diddy is a capitalist. The only way for capitalism to survive and to exist is off the poor, off the backs, I'm sorry, of poor people. If anybody don't know what capitalism is, do I need to look it up? The only reason capitalists survive are off the backs of poor people. Let's look up the definition of capitalism before we move on, because I just want to be sure. Sure, everybody's on the same page. I don't want to drag this out because I just want to read this little article. Um, all right. All right. Let's look up the definition of capitalist. And then we're going to understand. And this is going to tie in why Diddy is a capitalist. All right. Let me share this tab instead. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Share this tab instead. All right. The definition of capitalism, which is the act of being a capitalist, is an economic political system. An, I'm sorry, an economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit. Profit. Diddy is a private owner. He is the CEO and head of Bad Boy Records. Keywords control, wait, I'm sorry, a country's trade is are, and industry are controlled by private owners for profit. Every single person signed to Bad Boy Records was under Diddy's control and he made profit while these people made nothing. I knew that nigga Diddy needed to go to prison, not jail, bitch, not a concentration camp hope. I knew that nigga needed to go to prison when Carl Thomas dropped arguably one of the greatest R&B albums of the early 2000s. Emotional. I know every song interlude from beginning to end. When that nigga said, I'm emotional and I can't let go. When that nigga drove in front of his old lady house with her husband and her child and said, I wish I never met her. When that nigga was out there in the rain in a coat in the summertime hollering, summer rain, sweet rain, whispers me too sweet and makes me up again, my rain. I was first confused as to if it was hot in New York or if it was cold, first of all. Then secondly, I was looking in the background and I said, it's giving summer vibes. Why is this nigga out there in a peacoat in the rain? Neither here nor there. When that nigga dropped that album, and I played it, I still play it in 2023. 2023. Lady, lay your body. Let me rub the lonely. Oh, don't get me started on faith. Can't nobody who can love me like you do. No one. And the reason that I'll ever, I will never be hundred. That whole album, bitch, please. When them niggas was dropping Heat 112, Cupid doesn't lie. Oh, he the one that's gonna give you a try or whatever they be saying. When, when Mace came out, it, it was hollering, Harlem on the rise. I ain't never even been to Harlem. I don't know that, but then I only see them on TV with Mace and them. And when I seen that nigga doing all of this, all these fire ass albums hitting the block on Bad Boy Records. Don't get me started on Kima, Keisha, and Pam. Jesus Christ. Y'all not, listen. Do you understand let me read the super chat first because I got to get the Kima Keisha and Pam. We got to talk about Kima Keisha and Pam. We have to talk about Kima Keisha and Pam. Do you know who that is? Y'all remember when Cardi B said, Do you know who I am? They should be saying that. Girl. Thank you for the super chat. Let me see. Because we got to get into this. Because I'm, 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 I'm tying this all in. 
Because y'all really need to wake up. I know I'm playing, but this is real shit. I'm telling a joke in real life. Listen. Thank you, Miss O, for the super chat. Us New Yorkers are straight without weirdo Diddy. I'm glad he's being exposed. The bottom ish to Clive D and Harvey Watt mm -hmm, is serious. Now going to be exposed. Honey Sloan Bella, who's a medium, predicted this. I saw that. I still needed to go back and watch that. We're going to pull up a little clip of hers, too. And she predicted it damn near to the day. Listen, let me tell y'all something. This is supposed to be Educational Friday, right? Educational Friday is when we typically learn something. Did you guys know that Senator Robert F. Kennedy predicted Barack Obama being president the year that he was? On the night Martin Luther King was shot and, and popped and, and, and unalived, he gave a speech to a bunch of people while he was on this campaign. And he predicted to the year a black president. I'm just saying there's no coincidence, y'all. Listen, how do I how do I even explain this? Y'all gotta just Wake up! please wake up. Is it sinking in yet? No, Obama ain't black. He's biracial. He ain't nigga. He not even nigga black. He ain't his part from Nigeria. No shade. Ain't his part from Nigeria. He not even African-American. And niggas was so, I ain't gonna lie, I was one of them too. Hope. One day my son gonna be the president. I was crying. I was on Bourbon Street drinking uh, hand grenades, bitch. I was out there drunk as a skunk. I had, it was my first and last time voting for president. Can we be clear? But it was my first. Oh, he from Kenya? Same difference. But you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? But it was my first and last time voting. I ain't vote since then. Since that nigga got up there, had me crying, talking about my son could be the next president. Oh, let me go get pregnant right now so my son could be the next president. Oh. <laughs> that was my ugly ass on Bourbon Street with a hand grenade, drunk as a skunk, tied and through, running around celebrating what I thought was nigga, but he wasn't no nigga. And you know what's crazy? When, when Trump said get the birth certificate, niggas was all in the uproar. Ooh. You want to see his birth certificate, but we not on politics today. Let's move on. Where was I going? Wake up. That's where I was. Wake up. Nothing is a coincidence. Nothing. Nothing. It is not a coincidence that Robert F. Kennedy, and we're going to talk about that, y'all. Remind me. Robert F. Kennedy pre uh, pre predicted, I'm sorry, a black president up to almost the year that we had one. Remind me, please, y'all. Keep Hold me to that. There's also no coincidence that... What was the other coincidence I was talking about? Oh, there's no coincidence that Diddy is able to make all this money and all these amazing... Diddy had the top of the top artists. Do you hear me? The top of the top artists. He had the how how did none of these people become successful in the game? Because he is a capitalist. Somebody said something I saw that I like. Hold on. Hell no, Africans ain't no niggas. Listen. Oh, all right. Since it's educational Friday, we might as well get into it. Africans are black. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Niggas with the hard ER that was called, you know, in, in America, those were slaves and descendants of slaves. Africans, first generation, second generation, no shade, love all y'all in the diaspora, but y'all not nigga. Y'all not. Y'all black. Some of the clear people think we all the same, but y'all not nigga. So no, Africans are not niggas. No, they are not. They're not. But this is Educational Friday. I just had to address it. Um. No, Mary was not signed. Shout out to Mary. She wasn't signed. Because remember, when Faith came along, he put all of his, um, he put all of his, uh, his stock into, uh, in Faith. 
And then Mary was like, well, fuck that. Since you want to be all up in this whole shit, it is what it is. We are Americans, AKA niggas. Thank you, Tweety. When I can't find that comment, but I'm looking at it. Look. So there's no coincidences. Everybody is around here saying the exact same thing about Diddy. Just like Will, we've heard, put a one in the chat. If you heard Diddy was over there. Do I have to pull it back up? I think I'm, I might need to just pull it back up. No, I ain't gonna pull it back up. But put a one in the chat if you heard rumors of Diddy being on the down low. Put a two in the chat if you've never heard that before. Or maybe you, no, put a one if you heard Diddy likes the boys. Or put a two in the chat if you never heard that. Y'all heard it. Exactly. I'm looking at the ones. Y'all heard it. There is no coincidence. When Diddy got up here and everybody kept saying, everybody kept saying that he likes boys. Have y'all not seen him with Meek Mill? Philly, y'all back on the docket. God damn it, Philly. The, the city of brotherly love. Do you know Meek? When Meek Mills was bent over in front of the toilet, y'all remember that? At the all-white party? Y'all remember? Get Philly back up here. Philly, Philly, I know y'all thought y'all was off, but get back up here. Philly, Meek Mills, y'all savior, you know. Uh, what Meek Mills say, um, I used to pray for times like this. What times, Philly? What 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 times was you praying for, Meek? So I had to grind like that to shine like this. Hmm. Philly, y'all got to do better than that. Y'all got to. Oh, I'm glad you said that, Tita. Tita, I'm so glad you said that. Let me get off of here. Let me say this. Remember, hear me out, y'all. This is real talk. No jokes. Hear me out. Do y'all remember a few days ago when Kiki Palmer Mama went off on Darius? She did not know she was recorded and she was going off on Darius and was saying, oh, you around here worry about her fucking with Usher, but he's bisexual. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? And remember, Kiki Mama had to come back and say, oh, I was just playing. I ain't mean that part, but I meant all the rest of it. Y'all remember that? I remember I was there. Well, do you believe, I, when she said that, I said cap. She's saving herself, but it's cap. Whatever she said, especially in the heat of anger, there's only two times you learn the truth from a person. I keep telling y'all this. The, there's only two times in life you will ever hear the full truth from a person through anger and through a joke. And then drunk somewhere in between. Through anger and through a joke. She said, you over there worried about her with Usher, and he's bisexual. Did he raise Usher from 13? And if we really want to get into it, his mom. Are y'all ready? Can we talk for real? Y'all ready to throw y'all feelings out the window? If you, if you got soft feelings, leave right now. If you got soft feelings, leave right now. If you got soft feelings, leave right now. I'm giving you five seconds. Five, four, three, two. One, zero. If you up in here, you got to get it how you live. Just like Aaliyah Mama sold her to the industry, allegedly, them people sells they churn to these people. Allegedly. They say it. Mm-hmm. So Usher was given to Diddy at the tender age of what was it, 12 or 13? Y'all remember that? Remember Usher said he woke up and he seen some shit at some parties that he should not have seen at his young tender age? Y'all remember that? Girl, God bless the day, Aaliyah, if Aaliyah was here, let me tell you something. If Aaliyah was here, y'all fave wouldn't be here. Now, whoever that is, insert the name. I ain't gonna say who it is. But if Aaliyah was here, y'all fave wouldn't be who the, who y'all fave is. If, if we gotta be real. But these people sell their children to the industry. Tevin Campbell, allegedly, remember, this is all alleged. Fair use, allegedly, they said. You see how I got dot, 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 they said? This is all alleged. Let's, let's, let's count them up. Usher, Justin Bieber, uh, uh, Aaliyah, put some more in the chat if y'all know who are Kiki. Mm -hmm. Who else? 
else was in the, who else was sold in the industry? Beyonce. Who else? All them churns. Tevin Campbell. Chris Brown. The Jackson Fives. Rihanna. Monica. Michael Jackson. No, Nikki was a grown, almost a grown ass woman, girl. Nikki don't count. <laughs> Nikki was almost. Orlando Brown. I don't know how old Doja was. B2K, Lord have mercy. All the Disney churn. <laughs> I like this comment. <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> hold on. Y'all is crazy in these comments. I got to start reading all these comments. Brandy. Brandy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Justin Timberlake, Britney, Justin, Brandy, all the child stars. They are literally being sold. Janet, Lil Wayne, now New Orleans got to get up here. If you're from New Orleans, get up here. Lil Wayne was about nine years old when he got with Birdman. Nine, nigga. So all that shit Lil Wayne be rapping about, I know he's such a great artist because Lil Wayne ain't live none of that shit. That nigga went from his mo titty to Birdman titty. He ain't never lived none of that shit. Lil Wayne been doggone coddled on the Birdman since he was 19 years old. Come on now. Listen, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm not a teacher, but I'm just trying to educate y'all. here all day talking about all of these churns that was sold allegedly for for legal purposes that was so Lil Romeo New Orleans get up here again well no he don't count Lil Romeo crisscross Lil Romeo not from New Orleans his daddy from New Orleans Lil Romeo from uh, LA California y'all gotta y'all gotta take California Lil Romeo belong to y'all he don't belong to us he not us Lil Romeo ain't spent two two hours in New Orleans, girl. New, Lil Romeo belonged to oh, where where was uh Master P at up in um wasn't Master P up in Oakland or something? Y'all that's he belonged to y'all. He 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 not one of us. He don't belong to New Orleans. So New Orleans stand down. Stand down, New Orleans, false alarm. Not him. Not him. New Orleans stand down. We're gonna come back to y'all. Not him. It was LA. Yeah, stand down. Yup, Chris Brown. All of these churn are sold into this industry. Immature girl, and I remember I will never lie again. I will never lie again. Oh, that was my girl. You couldn't tell girl. I wanted to go to the scream to it so bad. My mom said, Girl, sit your ugly ass now. You ain't going nowhere. I said, All right. I'm just let my friends come back to school and tell me how it was. You know what I'm saying? My mom ain't let us just go run around in the streets like that. You know, my mama was like a real mama, so. We couldn't just go to the concert. Like, man, we going to the concert. Girl, go sit your ugly ass down. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was kind of different for me. But I used to wait, get back to school and let my friends tell me what happened after their mamas dropped them off. And I remember saying, damn, I wish my, I wish I had a mama to drop me off. Now that I'm 40, thank you, mama. Hey, mama. Dear mama. Hot, whatever Kanye West be saying, child, please. But look, he sure did, Alima. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Alima, you've been on fire. Alima, Alima. That girl said Jesus Jr., girl. I, I got to start reading the comments. Aaliyah, I, she was the first one I, stalk, I talked about. But look, he met, he met this girl at 19. She was still a child. She was, she was 19. Focus and in, 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 in emphasis on the word teen. 19. Who said the rug rats, girl? Y'all got to be strong. <laughs> Thank you, Miss O, for the super chat. She said Aaliyah would have been the main if she settled hard. I got to read. I can't see it from here. Aaliyah would have been the main if she settled hard with the clearest of and the Illuminati. That's what they said. Jaden and Willow seen it. Jaden and all of these people sell their children into the industry for a buck. 
So not now that we've got that out the way, the Rugrats too shit, even though they was drawn on hell, put baby's kids up there too. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Let's kind of get into a couple of details. Webster girl, Webster girl. When I seen Webster sitting on Michael Jackson lap, God, lap, God bless the uh, the goat. But when I seen him sitting on Michael Jackson lap, I said y'all got to be crazy. Tom and Jerry, Gary Coleman, mm-hmm, Brandon T. Jackson, girl, please. Anyway, Shirley Temple got it bad from what I heard. But look, we we don't do the clear we, the clear kids. That's between them and their mamas. Now we talking about the, the the Negro kids. You know what I'm saying? But look. Um, let's get into this, uh, this, this, this article and I'm going to just read a little bit of it. I ain't going to do the whole thing. Cause I'm pretty sure y'all done heard all this shit, heard it all before. So listen, it goes, all right. Disclaimer, this story uh, contains graphic details of physical and actual abuse. It says music mogul, Sean Harlem on the rise combs, best known as Diddy has been accused of track, well, tape, actual essay, uh, as trafficking by singer and, and former partner Cassie through his attorney Combs has denied the allegations. Of course he has. Cassie, who sued under her legal name, Cassandra Ventura, dated the famed hip hop producer for about 11 years before they split in 2018. She filed her S trafficking SA lawsuit against Combs on Thursday in U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. It says Ventura's also alleged that she was held down by Mr. Combs and endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands, referring to that period of him as dark times during which she had trapped by Mr. Combs in a cycle of, of abuse, according to a copy of the complaint obtained Thursday by the time. Y'all remember when, um, really quickly, y'all remember when Young Miami had that stupid ass uh, sign up there talking about congratulations, Poppy, when he got that award? And he said, shout out to uh, Cassie for being there for me through hard times, through dark times. Then See, the people be playing in y'all face. You know why? Because y'all sleep. Y'all need to wake up. But I ain't going to play the, uh, the little thing. Listen, it said the lawsuit brought under New York's Adult Survivors Act comes in the wake of others, of others filed in the state this month against Aerosmith frontman Steven Tyler, whatever they said he did, he did it. Music exec L.A. Reid, whatever they said he did, he did it. And former Grammy chief Neil Partnow, I don't know him, but whatever they said he did, he did it. The Adult Survivors Act created a one-year look-back window during which adults who alleged they were S.A. or, yeah, S.A. Kasu, despite the statute of limitations having run out, that window expires next week. Shout out to Cassie. You good on your time, in fact. In the filing, 37-year-old Ventura accuses Cone 54 of taping her and y'all know y'all can see the real word, but tape it. Can y'all see it? Hold on, let me put it up here so y'all can see. It. I don't like. I don't want y'all to think I'm making stuff up, so y'all can see it. All right. Accusing Sean's of, of Combs of taping her in her home. She tried to leave him physically attack, physically attacking and injuring her, forcing her to engage in SA with male S workers while filming the encounters running around with a firearm, introducing her to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and requiring her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. Let me say this. When a person has so much money and too much money, things that normal people enjoy, they no longer enjoy. So this sounds about right. Remember, he, it's bigger than allegations of him liking the boys. It's what he's doing. He's going off into voyeurism. If y'all don't know what voyeurism is, it's basically, I want you to, to, to sleep with my wife or my husband, and I just want to watch. And I might masturbate or something off of it. It says he signed up to his label, Bad Boy Records, within a few years, lured Miss Ventura into an... Um, ostentatious, fast-paced, and drug-fueled lifestyle and into a romantic relationship with him, with him. Her boss and one of her, and one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry and a vicious, cruel, and controlling man nearly two decades, his, her senior, the lawsuit said. I'm surprised Birdman ain't up here. When Birdman up here, I'm gonna need New Orleans to step up too. Um, But men don't really tell, so you know how they go. You know what I'm saying? Okay, did his lawyer Ben Brathman 
said in a statement to the Times that his client vehemently vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations and accused Ventura of being persistent and demanding more than $30 million from Diddy for the last six months. He added that the lawsuit is riddled with baseless and outrageous claims, claim, uh, wait, uh, aiming to tarnish Mr. Cone's reputation and seeking a page. Y'all remember when uh, the, the girl said T.I. stuck his size six and a half foot in her, in her cooch? Remember all the endorsements T.I. lost? Yeah, it did it on the way. And all they had to do was just say it. Anyway, according to the lawsuit, when she was 19 and he was 37, after signing her to his label, the suit alleges Comb took control of her professional and personal life and began S and physically abusing her. I'm trying to say these words. Uh, abusing her with increased frequency. Combs introduced Ventura to opiates around 2008 the lawsuit claimed and would often have pills and other drugs out in the open like candy it's like candy he allegedly demanded eventually that ventura procure prescriptions for his miami doctor in her own name rather than taking the mogul's pills combs also had ventura's personal medical records sent directly to his email address the lawsuit states god damn talk about controlling for instance, when Ms. Ventura began experiencing memory loss, potentially due to excessive drug use and or head injuries caused by Mr. Combs' beatings, ooh, her MRIs were provided directly to Mr. Combs. Ooh, listen, everything is for sale. Everything has a price tag. You see these doctors, you see these lawyers, you see these police, you see these firemen, you see these astronauts, everybody has a price. Moving on, Mr. Combs also repeatedly arranged for his staff to drive Ms. Ventura to certain doctor's appointments. So he was in control of everything. It also alleges that in January 2009, Combs began enraged, became enraged when he learned that Ventura had spoken with another music manager. The incident allegedly occurred at a park taking place at a club. Combs pulled her out of the club and into a car, the suit states, where he pushed her into a corner and stomped on her face. She light-skinned. Mr. Combs' security staff, Roger Bonds, tried to stop the beating, but was unable to de-escalate the situation, the suit says. When the car arrived at Mr. Combs' residence, Ms. Ventura attempted to run away, but Mr. Combs followed her and proceeded to, to a, again kick her in the face. God damn. Ms. Ventura was bleeding profusely and was un, wait, ushered into Mr. Holmes, Mr. Combs' home, where she began to throw up from the violent assault. Oh, my God. The lawsuit alleges that Ventura was often stashed in hotels while bruising healed and states that during one such stay at the London Hotel in L.A., she allegedly asked to go home to her parents, but Combs wouldn't let her leave. Girl, that's how they do. Within a few months of the beginning of a romantic relationship with Combs, when Ventura was 22, she said she felt beholden to his whims and demands, according to the suit. Once they were in... Wait, I'm sorry. Once they were staying in New York City, the following says, Combs told Ventura he had voyeurism fantasies and pressured Ventura to engage in SX with male S workers while he watched. That You know, that's weird. He, that's, that's what the clear men do. He was in that type of stuff. Girl, he allegedly provided drugs for those involved in these encounters, including ecstasy. Oh, that was back in the day. Cocaine. GHB, ketamine, and marijuana, and often recorded the activities. Encounters like this were called freak offs, according to the suit, and could last multiple days. The suit further states that in 2011, 2011 Combs and Ventura had a brief rough patch during which v Ventura began dating musician Kid Cudi. Oh, yeah, now this is the part I heard about. So they saying Cassie was fucking with Kid Cudi, and they say Combs went through. Cassie's emails and discovered an exchange between her and Cuddy. They said Combs then pummeled her, including with a corkscrew. The lawsuit says what he did with the corkscrew. Ventura says she went to her parents' home in Connecticut, where her mama took photographs of her bruises in February 2012 during Paris Fashion Week. Combs told Cassie, then he told Cassie he was going to blow up Cuddy's car. Kid Cuddy. Ain't that the nigga who said, I'm on a pursuit of happiness and I know everything that... Ain't that that nigga? Ain't that that nigga? I think that's that nigga. Yeah, okay, invade. Okay, invade. Yeah, that's him. 
It said, and then he wanted to ensure the musician was home with his friends when it happens. The suit states, around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in the driveway, bitch. What? This nigga blowing up cars like on the movie Casino? Representative from Kid Cudi, real name Scott Raymond Sergio. Where this nigga from? He Italy? He Italian? Scott Raymond or Ramon Sergio Mescudi, oh yeah, that nigga black Italian, did not respond immediately to the Times' request for comment. However, regarding the exploded car, he told New York Times through his publicist, this is all true. <gasps> so Kid Cudi said that did happen. Oh, and he sang day and night. Oh, I, I see you, it's J-Dub. After years of silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. Ventura said in a statement Thursday, she said that with the Adult Survivors Act window about to close, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be recovering for from the rest, well, from for the rest of my life. Let me just say this. In addition to Combs, the lawsuit also names his businesses Bad Boy, as they should, Bad Boy Entertainment and Bad Boy Records among the defendants, as well as Epic Rep Records and Combs Enterprises, LLC. Oh, this is crazy. All right, we ain't going to read all this. Let me say this. Let me get up here. Remember Kiki Mama? I said this already. Kiki Mama a couple of weeks ago said, you talk, talking to Darius, you over there worry about her over there with Usher, but Usher is bisexual. Remember, I remember I was there when you niggas were saying, oh, she wrong for that. That man not bisexual. How the hell you know what's going on in Usher's pants? Now they said he was burning. Remember they said he had the, uh, the herp? Y'all remember when they said he had the herp? Now, y'all mean to tell me he grew up under the likes of Diddy and he ain't never dibbled and dabbled? Did she, I thought she said bisexual, Chanel. She said gay. She might have did say gay. Oh, I guess that's what she said. Got She said gay. Straight up gay. That's what y'all saying. Oh, well, let me let me retract. They said, Kiki Mama said, he said she was straight up game. Girl, this is this is crazy. But look, coincidentally, even though there are no coincidence, she came out a couple of days ago. What was it? Yesterday, day before, saying Usher was gay. Now, all the rumors that have been in the past have come back. And Diddy is not Diddy. Um, Cassie is over there saying that he was kicking her ass and other people are coming out about other rumors. Let me let y'all see this. Um, I want to show y'all this. Hold on. Because I need y'all to see this shit and understand how it all ties in and correlates. Keep in mind, 50 Cent been saying a nigga was gay for years, for years and years and years, hours and hours. Who this is? Oh, no. And rest in peace to Big, man. But I ain't gonna lie. If you from New York, tap in and answer this. Riddle me this. Remember when Biggie put in him one of his rhymes? He said, she looks so good. I want to suck her daddy's. You know what? Can somebody from New York explain that to me? Now, we got to explain. Um, We have to explain New Orleans. We got to explain Birdman kissing them, churning them out. But somebody explain that lyric to me, please. I'm just trying to see something. I heard it and I wasn't sure what was happening. But what, what happened, y'all? Now, who is this? Girl, people posting all kinds of receipts. If anybody understand what, what he was talking about, oh, no, Queen Revolution. What you mean, wordplay? Girl, you know how many ways you can play with word? You can play, you can do wordplay no, way more than you can play with, with play, though, girl. What is you talking about, wordplay? Uh-uh, we need a better excuse. Look, uh, is that how you say that, Tiny? Or today, she said she can't even explain it, girl. I'm just trying to see what happened. What happened? Yes, Biggie did. Yes, he did. That's what he said. New York, y'all on the docket bad. You know, Philly on here bad too, but y'all up here bad. Richard Pryor was known to be in the closet. I'm trapped in a closet. So just because he said it first, don't make it right. Just because he said it first, don't make it right. 
Because they said, Jennifer, explain to me why Biggie said the girl looks so good, he want to suck her daddy's pickle. What was going on? Tanae, I thought I said, oh, thank you. All right, thank you for helping me out. Mm-hmm. Keisha, no, it wasn't. Keisha, you, Keisha, let me, hold on, let me go find Keisha. It was a joke, gal. Girl, Keisha, is you from New York? I'm talking to the people of the New York streets, Keisha. Love you down to the ground. But girl, if when I want to know about Shaba, Mr. Loverman, Shaba, I'm going to call you, okay? When I want to know, I'm going to call Keisha. I'm going to call Keisha when I need to hear Petra. When I need to, when I got questions about, um, uh, Bob Marley, I'm coming straight to Keisha. Do you understand me? I'm not passing go. I'm not collecting $200. I'm coming straight to Keisha Gyal. But for right now, I'm talking to the people of the New York City. Girl, you y'all was over there drinking coconut water when Diddy was over here. Not Diddy, when Biggie was around here saying this. Girl, this ain't got nothing to do with Jamaica. Let the people of the New York say what they got to say. Please. Anyway, let's move on. Shout out to Keisha, though. That's my girl. Y'all leave Keisha alone. But anyway, that's not where I was going. I was getting this receipt of, uh, hold on. I'm getting everybody bringing out all this stuff. Now, they had some stuff came out about Kim Porter, girl. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They had some stuff came out about Kim Porter. And, um, oh, girl, let me show y'all what um Cameron said, girl. Cameron. Now, listen, I've always questioned Mace. Let me just say this. I've always questioned Mace. Yes, I have. I ain't going to put the, the thing up there for good because, you know, the, the breakfast club like to strike it down to the ground. But listen to what Cameron had to see. Hold on. When he just signed with Bad Boy, you didn't even... You talking about Mace? Puff had a brownstone, I believe, on 35th Street and, like, Park Avenue between... um, Park, It's some brownstones down there. I believe 30, 35th or 36th. And Mace was staying there. And um, I went to go meet him down there one day so we could bust a move. This is when he just signed with Bad Boy. He didn't even have an album out yet. He was just getting signed. And I went to use a bathroom, and it was a dildo um, on the bathroom sink. And Jeez. when I came out, I asked him what's about. He like, that's homeboy's joint. You know, I don't know what it's about. He always have girls over here, but I don't know. I said, well, this one is sink. This is your bathroom. You're using this bathroom. <laughs> I don't know where his bathroom at. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's word to my son because stop breathing. I but swear to God. But you know what, guys? You dildos on girls <laughs> yeah, sometimes. That's true. We seen some. What he said? I'm not saying he did. Right. I'm you just, just telling you what I'm saying. It was just awkward. I'm not saying that right. he did it was for either. Puff had a brownstone, I believe. Angela Yee. Angela Yee's infection. I could not stand that high yellow heifer. I could not stand that bitch. It was like a waste of vaginal space on the breakfast club. Whenever we needed this bitch to apply pressure, this hoe always jumped up. Oh, well, you know, men using on, on girls. Girl, shut your ugly ass up. She ain't ugly, but you get what I'm saying? Angela Yee, shut up. Shut the fuck up, Angela Yee. Angela Yee, go lay down. Go lay down, Angela Yee. Ain't nobody asking you to interfere. Hold on. I, 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 I hold on. I got something for y'all. I got something for Angela Yee. Angela Yee, I'm just about to play you what the people said. I didn't say it. Now, this is from somebody in New Orleans. If you're from New Orleans, his, his you, you might know him if you're from New Orleans. I ain't going to say his name. I'm going to just play what he had to say about Angela Yee. And then we're going to go from there. Hold on. I, because and, now that she said it. Now that she said it, now I'm going to let this man cuss her out. I ain't going to cuss her out. I'm going to let this man cuss her out. Hold on. I ain't, I, he from New Orleans. Hold on. Because that just don't make no sense. This bitch up here, girl, shut the fuck up. We had tea. And here you go. What are you doing? I'm glad up. 
Hold on. Now, now, don't get me wrong. This dude is off the hand. He's off. He's unhinged. This dude I'm about to play, y'all. He, he, he's, he runs for offices that he never wins, but that's I like him. You know what I'm saying? He cusses people out like crazy. Uh, he's a little throwed off, but that's all right. Shut up. No, no. I got to play all this. Girl, Angela Yee really knows me. Like, girl, shut up. The boy was giving us the tea. And he, you come, well, he gonna me using it, but shut your ugly ass up. I can't even find it. Maybe it's not meant for me to play it because he be going off. Hold on. Y'all got to hear this. He went the fuck off on Angela Yee. He went the fuck off. Not that one. Shut up, nigga. All right. I can't find him. And you know what? That might be for the best because this nigga cusses like a sailor. Do you understand me? This nigga cusses like a sailor. But listen to what I'm saying. Angela Yee, shut the fuck up, bitch. Shut up. We getting the tea about dildos on a doggone counter and here you go. Shut your ugly, your pie head ass up. Shut up, bitch. Let's move on. See what else they got up here, girl. Angela, you really blow me. But again, did y'all not remember him with the dildo? Um, y'all don't remember him with the dildo on the bed with um with Kevin Hart and all of them was in there, and then Usher came in and talking about we woke up playing video games. Y'all remember that? Diddy over here talking about um being in love with Cassie, girl. I wasn't I was in love then, you know? Yeah. But you've been in love with Cassie for a while. Like you yes. guys, this is survival. I mean, I'm not saying that that you're sloppy or anything like that. <laughs> but I know that outside of your baby's moms and taking care of your kids and your empire, mm -hmm. you do like to party, okay? Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that you and Cassie have gone this far mm -hmm. like the distance sure was, what is it about her that you know i mean it's just like when a record comes on the way she moves yeah. like when i look at her the way she smiles oh. um the way i see her look at me sometimes when i wake up and she's already awake oh. you know and the met gala what the sitting on the steps was going on <laughs> what, what 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 is going on here now, I'm going to be honest, like, they didn't have my tickets right the year before, so I said I'm going to stun on them and sit on the stairs as my woman looks good and takes those pictures. I call Cap. Um, that's what narcissists do. That's what people, abusers do. They get up there and act like it's all cool, it's, everything is amazing, so then when they do whatever they do, you could take it a little more. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Girl, I'm not listening to Aubrey. I'm not doing Aubrey. Aubrey, go lay down. Please go lay down. Please, Aubrey. Please. I'm, I'm not, I don't ask for a lot. Just go lay down. Um, I'm trying to find. <laughs> y'all remember Ye went off on him? Okay, this is what I want to show y'all. Let me fix it so y'all can see it. Now, this is Diddy with a young Justin Bieber. Y'all tell me how this make, makes sense. Remember I told y'all these people allegedly, but these people be selling their kids. Look. Okay. Okay. All right, so, so I'm going to be driving this yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, when you get 16. Mind you, hold on. Let me set it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you rock this. Every let, me let, you, let me set this up. This is a young Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber had to be about what? 15? 16 or something like that? He was slated to go stay with Diddy. He went to go stay with Diddy for some time, just like Usher. And, you know, um, I wonder, I hope he wasn't wrestling for the cereal from this little boy, too. But take a look. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you rock this every time you come in LA. Yeah, this will be yours. So, every oh, time you come okay. in LA, it's a little dusty, but you know, who did the front shot in? Man. Man. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so so I'm gonna be driving this yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah, when you get 16, you come down there, you gotta, you know, wear your seat. I mean, I'm 15, you can ride in the passenger seat. I got my permit now that, not yet. No. All right, no. 16. No, man. Right. Slow down, let's slow down, Josh. Okay. Let's slow down, okay? One, one step at a time. But yeah, yeah, the keys is yours when you, you know, when you get 16. You're good right. to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. And then, when you get 18, you get the house. You get the mansion. Okay, I get yeah. the mansion. Yeah. So where, where where are we off to now? Where would you like to go? Um, I mean, wherever you want to go. Where, where are we going? <laughs> we just so check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in. You ever seen the movie Forty Eight Hours? Right now, he's having Forty Eight Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like like like, the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we we can't really disclose. Mm. But um, it's definitely a fifteen year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I I had legal guardianship of Usher when when you know he he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So um, <laughs> and, and, and we're gonna go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. I'm taking this out tonight. What you want to do? What you want to do over the next 48 hours? 48 hours. Let's go. Um, are we gonna let's just go get some girls? Let's go and get some girls. Man. Mm. He couldn't even respond straight up when he said, Let's go get some girls. He kind of like, mm. you know what I mean? You listen, y'all. Just like Usher when he was young, when Usher was young, and Usher was over there with Diddy at 14, 13, 14, 15. Just like um, just like Lil Wayne was 9, 10, 11, 12 over there with Birdman, just like uh Justin Bieber was over there with him at all of this big at this big age, just like Miley Cyrus, just like um uh what's the black girl name? My baby used to love her, Raven, Simone, all of these kids. When it comes to this industry, it is not what you think it is. So I don't really understand why people just automatically assume somebody hating when they be coming out on their page. Y'all remember when I was talking about Krishan yesterday on one of my videos? Remember I said they using her, but she don't even realize it? Let me tell you something. There's no coincidence that Krishan, not, not Krishan, that Tamar invited Krishan to that dog on that, that concert. And we're not going to spend time, a long time on Krishan. I'm just using Tamar as an example. Now, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just correlating shit. There's not a coincidence that Tamar Braxton invited Krishan to that concert. Now, Krishan is not a child. Krishan is grown. Krishan is 23. So she's not a child. However, Krishan has the mindset of a child. That industry is cruel, it's cold. They suck you dry, they suck you dry and take everything from you. That is what they do. They find the most talented people and they take from them. But typically, the most talented people are the most traumatized. Think about all of your faves. All of them. Almost all, every single one of them had a traumatic childhood. Almost every single one of them have. A, a past of a, a traumatic a traumatic childhood not the regular trauma i'm talking about the trauma trauma that's not a coincidence that is not a coincidence that is not a coincidence when meek mill and little baby is at the all white party with drew skin all of them and they're around these rich shriveled up prune clear billionaires everybody's in all white you got a clear man with his ass cheeks out you got Nori over there talking about the door. The door. Over there is homo. Over there is sacrifice. Or you can go straight. None of that. That is all real. But most people will sit up here and be like, because it's their fave. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. You have very few whistleblowers who will come out and say, hey, this is what's going on. But typically, the way the industry works on your brain is the industry will say, OK, we know that the most of y'all like this person. Right. So, like, let's say Michael Jackson. No, I ain't going to use him. No, fuck it. Let's use him. We talking about it. Let's say Michael Jackson. 
when there were claims of Michael Jackson being in the home with them kids, at first, originally, I said, hell no, nah, they hating on him because I love Michael Jackson at the time. Oh, I loved him down to the ground. Couldn't do no wrong to me. I was a, if Michael Jackson was, had Chris animals, I was a Michael Chris animal. You know what I'm saying? But once they did the interview and asked Michael about having them churn at his house and he admitted to having kids at his house, talking about they doing sleepovers. Mind you, this nigga 39, 40, and you doing sleepovers with nine and 10 year old sick children who are typically not capable of defending themselves and or reporting and, and saying stuff. I'm not saying he did it, but what I'm saying is there are no coincidences. I'm not saying that the people, what, what, what the people who came out and said he did, I'm not saying he was guilty of that because actually according to the fbi they did this thorough investigation and found that none of that happened mind you keep in mind everybody and everything has a price everybody and everything has a price everybody and everything has a price in uh cassie suit she alleged that there were people who would not bring her to the hospital he would create hospitals at hotels the doctors had a price. Police have a price. Fans have a price. R. Kelly was not capable of doing what he did. The nigga couldn't even read. Come on now. But this nigga pulled off the greatest. The nigga called himself the Pied Piper. Do you guys know what the Pied Piper is? The Pied Piper was a flute player who whenever he played his music, all the kids were blindly drawn to him and they were just mesmerized by the music. He called himself the Pied Piper. I feel bad because back then I used to be like, Pied Piper on a song. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing what the fuck that means. He was not capable of doing what he did unless he had other people to help him. Diddy got money. With money comes influence, and with influence comes power. Y'all see how uh, DJ Sky, big stupid duck ass, was over there behind Krishan? Listen to me. That industry is dark. When them celebrities get up there hollering, thank you, God, thank you, God. Oh, God, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I want to first give... Honor and thanks to God at the Grammys. I want to first give honor and thanks to God at the Oscars. I want to first give honor and thanks to God at the Emmys. Bitch, God ain't at the awards. You think God taking time out his busy day to make sure you get an award for your performance in training day, bitch? But see, niggas, 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 all niggas know is one God. Oh, if they say Jesus. Oh, when Krishan get up there and cry and pray, oh. We woke up, amen. Ah, niggas, oh, yeah, she's such a good Christian. She gave her baby back on the seventh day. To who? To who? Who did she give the baby back? I know she was in the church, but the pastor ain't shit neither. See that, that that's money she sold into the pastor? Talking about she paying ties? That bitch filmed the music video that day. Do y'all re realize that? They're not thinking the God you talking about, that ain't the God in Hollywood. God ain't got no business in Hollywood. God don't even be in Hollywood. Hollywood is of nothing but the devil. But it's crazy because all they have to do is just say it because you guys are, and I've been a victim of it too. Like I said, with the Michael Jackson thing, I was like, it's cap, it's cap, it's cap. And today I still don't know what really happened. However, what I do know is you look hella guilty talking about you had kids sleeping by your house, nigga. You Michael Jackson, you could have had the baddest of the baddest bitches, but you chose sick kids to sleep over. This nigga built a goddamn never, never land, a damn amusement park. Come on now. Most niggas, and, and I know he was clear on the outside, but he was nigga on the inside. Most niggas go get a chain and some cars and some bitches. Michael went got a Ferris wheel, a swing set, and he went down there to the uh, St. Jude Hospital to get some churn. It's called trauma. Most of your celebrities have childhood trauma. Most of them. If not almost damn near all of them. Most, if not almost all of them, have childhood trauma. Facts. In my China voice. And the thing is, they are highly gifted. 
and highly talented. However, what they do is put these people in compromising positions, i.e. your kids, i.e. grown adults, and they put them in positions to where they are dependent upon this shit, and then they have to just stay there. Now, I'm going to do a deep dive into the Diddy shit, because I, to be honest, because I decided to not go live yesterday and take yesterday off, so much has transpired between yesterday and today, I feel like I need to just do videos and come back. And I mean, matter of fact, I'm going to go live again tomorrow morning. Or tomorrow, I guess about 11, 12 or something like that. Somewhere around there. We'll get there. But listen, this industry is not what you think it is. I hate celebrities. No, I don't hate them because I don't know them. But I don't like celebrities. Not one. Even the ones I like, I don't like. Like, I love Jill Scott's music, but I don't like Jill Scott. Because I know Jill Scott signed on a dotted line to... Allegedly. These celebrities signed on a dotted line to make capital gain off the back or off the expenses of us, of us down here at the bottom. We are pushed everything that they want us to know through the industry. When Juvenile got his big black fat lip, ugly ass up there with them nasty ass goals in his mouth and say, vax that thing up. Do you understand how bad I wanted to hop into my car and pull up to his house? Do you understand? When that nigga say vax that thing up, him and Mia X, Mia bitch, I never forgive you, hoe. Mia X, you was you was regarded one of my tops, bitch. I will never forgive you for that, bitch. Never will forgive you. Never, ever, ever, ever. They push this shit through them puppets. Them people is puppets. Malcolm X said it in the sixties. Them people is puppets. They are there to control you, soldier boy. So when Cassie goes through what she's gone through, being isolated from her family, being put in all these situations, and she comes out with a suit, I ask myself, well, everything else Diddy has done that has been swept under the rug. How is it that this is able to pass the, the smell test? Well, then I start to tell myself, oh, okay, it makes sense. Um, Diddy done pissed somebody off in that industry. Yes, he did. Allegedly. Allegedly. These people are protected. They protected not because the people care. They're protected because they need them. Remember Diddy was out there with that vote or die bullshit, ugly ass shit? When, when, um, when, uh, what's her name? When Hillary, uh, crooked ass was running. I hope Denzel is okay. I like Denzel, but Denzel is part of the crowd too. LeBron. All y'all feeds. Beyonce. Love the music, but I got to be able to understand what I'm looking at. All them niggas. Oh, baby, Lil Wayne, all them niggas. All of them. Thank you, No, What's your name? What, what's your name for the um super chat? I don't want to mispronounce. I can't see it. I got the thing small. No T. Thank you again for the super chat. Oh, you sent me another one. Something same thing from Big Boy on the song Elevator. It, all of them. So when I be seeing um Ice Cube come up there hollering about, oh, they fucking with me with the big three. <sighs> they don't want to leave me in the big three alone. I don't want to be an Illuminati. Bitch, when did you get out? Uh, Ice Cube, when did you get out? I didn't know. I thought it was gang in. I thought it was uh blood in, blood out. When did you get out, Cube? What happened? What had happened? Oh, girl, what do I think about T.D. Jinx? That big, fat, funky, nasty, cheesy, dirty. First of all, I don't like pastas. None of them. They you you think the industry people are bad? Pastors are the worst thing that ever happened to the black community. Period. Point blank. Tenfold. Tenfold. They are the they are the most blood sucking vampires of the black. They are to me. Pastors are worse than drug dealers. Uh, unalivers. 
uh, you know, gangs, pastors are worse than them. And TDJ's big, fat, black, funky, nasty, cheesy, dirty, uh, ugly ass gets up there on his pulpit, mostly in an audience of black women. Don't get me started on Creflo now. Don't get Creflo up here yet. Now, now, listen, put him in there too. But back to T.D. Jakes. This is how crazy people is. T.D. Jakes could get up there and drag for black women, two black women, and still get black women to give them their money. Because it's, it's mostly women in the church. It ain't half and half. It's mostly black women in the church. But he would get up there on his pulpit. I don't even think they even open the Bible no more in church. This nigga will get up there on his pulpit and talk about how aggressive or how, how black women are, are too masculine. You look like you was, you, uh, T.D. Jakes gives me Will Smith bent over. What is you talking about, sir? Have y'all ever seen, uh, 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 they clone Tyrone? Outside of the pimp, the drug dealer, and who else they had cloned up there? The big, the, the the biggest third person up there was the pastor. Them people be telling y'all the truth in the movies. Them people be telling y'all a truth, the truth in the movies. Y'all, y'all be watching for entertainment. Them people be telling y'all the truth in the movies. what they doing they telling y'all per government policy per the so-called founding fathers they can do whatever they want to the american people as long as they let them know first so how do they do it through entertainment y'all remember when oh uh, what's that football player died on the field and came back them people be telling y'all the people be telling y'all, y'all just don't listen because y'all so busy being entertained. That's why I, I love black people, but niggas and flies, I do despise. Let me tell you why. Because niggas will care more about entertainment than what's really going on. There is no way if y'all, if y'all so-called Christians, because I'm not, I don't fall in the religious construct. I have a personal relationship with the most high God, the most high God. Jehovah Jireh, whatever you want to call him, uh, I lie with that. I got a personal relationship with this person, but I don't follow religious constructs because I see what they do to our people. They, they, they suck us dry. Pastors know more than anybody in the community how bad off we are. Pastors know more than anybody in the community what they're doing to us, because at least the drug dealer may not know. That might be all he knows. They teach pastors how to take your money and your mind. They teach pastors how to keep you sub subjugated. They teach them that. That's why they go to school. That's literally why they go to school. Thank you, Lali. She said, remember... A few years back, I think Tasha K interviewed a lady saying that he beat her and made her get rid of the baby. I think her name was Gina. You talking about Diddy? But now the church is dying out. Now the church is dying out because don't nobody go to church no more. Thank you so much for the super chat. Let me scroll down. Tawana, thank you so much for the super chat. They have divided the community and have helped to ensure that the man is the master and the woman is the slave to make more slaves through marriage. Huh. That's another thing. Because most of the married women I know be miserable as a motherfucker. I, if it ain't you, my bad. But I'm talking about the women I know. Them hoes miserable as a dog. Them hoes can't even sleep at night. They down there on some R. Kelly shit. I can't sleep, baby. No way. All to say you got a ring. 
and look at Beyonce with a message to enforce it. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. All them hoes. Whoa, oh, 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 what? Uh oh, 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 it was a bunch of hoes. Oh, 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 oh. All right, you got the ring, bitch. But the girl down the street got that peen. What is we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Do you understand the messages? You do you understand how the church and the industry and entertainment all combined and works together? Do you understand this? The church. Is where it all starts. The church is the people that tell you, do good, read your Bible, uh, do right by your neighbor, pray, but most importantly, pay your tithes, and you too shall inherit the kingdom of, uh, of God. Meanwhile, my question is, well, why I gotta go through you, nigga? Why I can't just pay the source? It's like selling drugs, right? If I decided today I want to sell drugs and I and somebody is coming to me and bringing me the drugs, after a while, I'm going to say, well, shit, why I got to go through you? Why I can't just go to the connect myself? Why is the pastor the midman, the middleman? Why? And this is the gag part. Most people don't realize it, but they end up worshiping the pastor more than they end up worshiping God. That's why you could get pastors in the church, i.e., uh, what's the man from New Orleans? Um, Bishop, um, uh, what's the man from New Orleans? He, my friends used to go to his church, big old church. Um, now I don't know why I keep Eddie Long too. That's another one, Jesus Christ. But there was a bishop from New Orleans who came out. It came out that he was sleeping with a young boy, and he went to the crazy hospital, and they had everybody in the church saying, "Well, he's not perfect." He's still a man. Y'all worship the pastor more than y'all worship the most high. The pastor, the church is where you get the foundation of submission, indoctrination, followership, not leadership, followership. And then you go into a school and then the school hones in. I'm talking about black folk. The school hones in on that indoctrination of followership, obedience. Can I go to the bathroom, ma'am? You gotta ask, you gotta raise your hand and ask. If your child running around the classroom because they bored, oh, that's ADHD. Get him on some pills so he can sit in the class like a zombie. If your child excels, meaning they make good grades, give them a little sticker and a, and a certificate. You are better than the rest of the kids. That just means you listen and you do better than you, you do what we tell you to do better than the other ones. That's all that means. That don't mean you small baby. That don't mean that. that. That's not what that means. But now you go from school, then you get to the industry, to the entertainment. That's what you've been watching all the time you was at church. That's what you've been watching the whole time you've been in school. You get a favorite. My favorite used to be Michael Jackson. You couldn't tell me no wrong about this man. You could not tell me no wrong about Michael Jackson until I became an adult and I started realizing, wait a minute, something in the milk ain't clean. But simply because you couldn't tell me no wrong about him. Whenever people would say shit about him, automatically dismiss it. So I understand the new people. But y'all different level with the shit, though. It's almost like this, this industry has clouded your brains. You don't even know how to think. You don't even know how to use reasoning. Like, you can't even say common sense. You, you, y'all, people through the schools and all that don't have common sense. So back to how it works. The church indoctrinates you on obedience. The school hones in on that skill of obedience and followership. Then entertainment blinds you by the lights and the glitter while they slide in the information you need that's going to go way over your head because you've already been taught by the church and by the school to shut the fuck up and listen and be obedient. I mean, how, how does that not, again, you go to church, the church teaches you how to be a follower, follow God, follow the pastor, the church teaches you how to be obedient. Be obedient to God. Well, what does God want? Don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't go nowhere. Don't say nothing. Da, 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 da. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But, but pastor, the man said he going to blow my head off. I, I, I pray about it. Don't you dare say nothing. You got to give that to God. But pastor, he outside in front of the door. Pastor, pray about it. 
Now you get to school. Hey, ma'am, teacher, I got to use the bathroom. No, sit there. You ain't going to the bathroom. Now you either pee on yourself or you get to run around the classroom. The bitch deemed you to be crazy. Oh, that's ADHD. Autism. Something wrong with them. Put the medication on you. Now your child is in the back of the school like this. Drooling. Then your child goes home, play video games, entertainment, watch sports, entertainment, go on to uh, TV, entertainment, social media, entertainment at its highest. And then your child sees, so they're so entertained and so obedient that when they see entertainers do fucked up shit, Christian animals, they're blinded. They're jaded because they've already been indoctrinated to shut the fuck up and agree. It's called indoctrination, people. Wake up! Please wake up. Entertainers indoctrinate you as well. I don't trust any entertainers, any celebrities, none of them. None of them are for your good. They all to dare to fuck you over. All, all of them. Every single one of them. Even the one you think gives a fuck about you don't give a fuck about you. Not none of them. Whatever Cassie said did he did to her, he did that shit. Jaguar right been saying this shit for years. And I know a lot of people don't like Jaguar. I don't know the lady from a can of paint to say whether I like her or not. However, what I will say is this. She may have lied about some things that maybe I'm unaware of that ain't got nothing to do with me. But when it comes to that industry and what she has been exposing in that industry, that girl ain't missed yet. That girl have not missed yet. That girl have not missed yet. She ain't missed yet. She ain't missed yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. She ain't missed yet. Thank you, Mama Jazz, for the uh, super chat. She said, I literally teach this to my kids. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany Thompson, for the super sticker. I appreciate you. And thank you, Linda Amos, for the super sticker. I appreciate you. I seen somebody ask, um, first of all, shout out to Stone Monroe in that interview. I went back and watched that shit. That shit like three and a half hours, but I watched every single bit of it. That fucking interview off the chain. I don't have no personal relationship to Jag, with Jag. I know people be like, oh, hell no, Keisha. Do I trust Nikki? Do I trust Nikki? Can a pig waddle in the sand? No, that's not the right one. Can a whale live in the jungle? Do I trust Nikki? Can a whale live amongst the beasts in the jungle? And it ain't just about Nikki. It's all of them. It's, it's not specific to Nikki. It's not specific to her. It's just the fact that these people are selling you out. These celebrities are selling you out. Like Diddy doing Bad Boy. Kima Keisha and Pam. Like Diddy do the people. Y'all seen what Diddy did to them people on Bad Boy. All of these celebrities doing the same thing to you. I told my daughter's teacher, if they put a toilet in the jail cell, they can go whenever they want. When she's to go, she has to go. You got your nerve to tell her no. But that's part of making sure your child is indoctrinated to be obedient. I pray Cassie remains protected. I do too. Because Diddy is something else. But to me, to be completely honest, when it comes to Cassie... Diddy done pissed somebody off. This is bigger than Cassie. If y'all think, if y'all think that Cassie is that powerful where she can go down there and file this paperwork without no help, and even Cassie might not know she getting help. Diddy pissed off the wrong people. This ain't got nothing to do with Cassie. Cassie is just a catalyst to get that nigga up out of there. Cassie is the catalyst to get that nigga up out of there. Whatever she said he did, he did that shit. 
But Cassie is the catalyst to get him up out of there. I see that on Twitter, somebody said, oh, Diddy must have didn't pay his full Illuminati taxes. I don't know. I laugh. But it, it, without joking about it, it's real. Them people selling y'all for paper. This shit way bigger than Cassie. That's the part right there. They are all programming, every single one of them. Every last one of them niggas and bitches. I don't trust none of your faves. Hey, I don't even trust Michael Jackson, and he used to be my fave. I don't trust them. I don't trust none of these niggas and none of these bitches. I don't trust them. Never did, never will. Tweeted a one. You're absolutely right. We are seeing the beginning of the end for Mr. Combs. This is the beginning of the end for Mr. Combs. Now, I don't know if he pissed off the people down there at Marvel when he was down there dressed up as the Jack, as the Joker or whatever, and they told him cease and desist, and that nigga came out as Batman. I don't know if they said, oh, I got something that'll hold your ass. Nigga, but see, this is what niggas don't understand, and this don't just happen on a celebrity level. This happened in real life. See, it's a lot of sambo ass niggas. Let me, let me, let me talk up. Let me talk to y'all real quick. Hold on. Let me talk to y'all real quick. It's a lot of sambo ass niggas. See, these are the niggas who get the pats on the head by master. Oh, good job, sambo. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, thank you, sir. They get the money. They get the clout. They get all the good things at the expense of your ass. Y'all remember the slave uh, stories they would tell how the house Negro would basically, uh, he would be worse than the, than the master himself because he want to stay within the master's good graces. It's the same thing with these celebrities. They up there, Sambo ass nigga, turnkey ass niggas. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, you giving me a million dollars, a hundred million dollars. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And then, but what they don't understand is even though they patting you on top of your head for now, even though they patting you on top of your head right now, that don't mean that you one of them. Because see, that's why niggas get it fucked up. Niggas get to believe it. Oh, we the same. Oh, he gonna make sure I'm taken care of. Now, when mad they come, mad they come, that's your ass. And Caramelly Mel, he had the issue with Ciroc. You remember that? Girl, I don't know who he done pissed off. Whoever he done pissed off is on to the break of dawn. Do you hear me? Them people want his neck. And I believe, this is just my belief, I believe that Outside of Cassie, which is a thing within itself, Kim Porter, rest in peace to that beautiful lady. She herself has been um has been allegedly, because she never admitted it, but abused by this nigga. All of a sudden, she come up unalive. And uh, all of a sudden, she come up unalive and the book gone that she was writing. Like, you can't make this shit up. Hold on. Stop saying that man tried to buy BET. Girl, he tried to buy a lot of shit. Girl, y'all crazy. <laughs> y'all is crazy. Talk about he tried to buy BET. You know what I'm saying? To honor the person that you said you love. To honor the woman who... Let me back it up. This the bodyguard. Puffy. He came out with a new album, man, called Love. And he got a song on there called Kim Porter. How you feel about that? I think that's probably a great thing to do. You know what I'm saying? To honor the person that you said you love. To honor the woman who <laughs> gave you a scar on your wrist for the rest of your life that you could always look at and, and remember. You know what I'm saying? But he going to always remember her. Kim was who Kim was. And then if he ever tried to forget her, all he had to do is look at his wrist. What you mean by that when you say that, you know, Kim Porter gave Puffy a scar? One night uh, when they were at, at home at Kim's house on 110th Street, he wanted to, you know, put his hands on her in the wrong way. And Kim took one of those court screws and ripped his wrist up. 
he, and hit an artery. And when she did that, he had to rush over to St. Luke's Hospital. I met him over there to the hospital. It was me, him, and Kim in the hospital when he was bleeding like crazy. Right, right. From your point of view, right, how would you describe Puffy and Kim Porter relationship when you was around? Oh, it was volatile. It, it, it was like, you know, damn it she do, damn it she don't. Like, Kim could not be with nobody else and he knew it. Let me say this. Shout out to Alima. Alima, girl, you've been cutting up in this bitch. Shout out to Alima. Alima, Alima. Girl, you done made me help come up with a whole new song, girl. Alima. Y'all give shout out. Put a purple heart in the chat for Alima, girl. Alima been cutting up. I fucks with Alima. Y'all, Alima one of my people now. Y'all, I fucks with Alima. Shout out to Alima. Shout out to Alima. That's my girl. I fucks with Alima. Do fuck with her. Do fuck with her. Um, let me let y'all hear this lady. This is the lady um, who did the media. She's a medium. This is the lady who was talking about... Um, just about what happened to her. She was talking about Kim, and she predicted to the date. Again, remember I told y'all there are no coincidences. This lady predicted to the date that this would happen. Listen to this lady. This is so, like, crazy. I am being shown November of 2023. So her death date was November 15th of 2018. But I'm being shown November of 2023. I don't think we're done with this. I feel she's shaking her head yes. Before she stare at me, then she wait, and now she's shaking her head yes. I am being shown that things are being prepared. She is showing me a trumpet. People are standing straight up. And there are people going to speak, not just about what happened to her, about other things. Something is unraveling. For some reason, she, this is so like crazy. I am Let being shown. This. I personally don't believe that clear people have ties to actual soul. Is that bad? I don't know. I just don't believe God. You got to have, you know, ties to the sun and shit. You know what I'm saying? But it don't matter because there's no coincidences. What I'm saying is to say this, just like Robert F. Kennedy predicted that there would be a black president. Somebody make this make sense. Why this lady know what the hell going on? Why? Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Jay? I'm pretty good. I, I was just wondering. Do y'all ever like sit back and think like when it comes to all of our black leaders or black uh, celebrities, either they gonna get accused of some grape stuff mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. like like I don't know or some gay stuff like 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 they doing with Will. Do y'all think this stuff is just set up this way and come feeding to us like like this stuff really took place? I, that frozen babe. Frozen babe, stay on, stay on mute, boo. Oh yeah, I I believe. I, listen, if if I'm gonna be honest, I believe in certain instances. Instances, I'm sorry, it's the same as when all these celebrities, so called, be unalive due to a heart attack. You ever notice they they all get heart attacks and they all just found unalive somewhere? Right. I believe that's that's a, a a part of it too. But I believe that a lot of them, when they get to certain levels of fame and certain levels of whatever they are, I think they they indulge into some real crazy shit. And I believe a lot of them, like Diddy, at the level that he's at, I know he done been into some crazy shit. Yeah, because think about it. Just think about it. Diddy, like, what woman didn't want to be with Diddy? Like, why would he have right. to take? Why would he have? To, I think, I think, like that the culture when you when you become to a certain level, you, you join this like someone like a gang, and like if you do something wrong, it'd be a violation. Like if you do something like goes if you try to go against the grain, the violation will be certain types of stuff. Mm -hmm. You got the death violation, you got the the gay violation, the pedo violation. Mm -hmm. I think it. I think that's what's really going on. Mm hmm. I think so too. I think so too. I I, I do because listen, these people don't understand when they be signing up for these positions. Mm -hmm. You playing a real dirty game. Like the people own you literally. Yeah. 
And they be having a lot of stuff. They can, they literally control, even if you don't do nothing. Like, for instance, y'all remember Malcolm X? When the FBI investigated Malcolm X, they combed this man tooth and nail. And they were even upset because they could not find anything on him. Whereas every other black leader they ever investigated, they had mounds and mounds of shit. They can come back and be like, hey, we got you. Better uh, shut the fuck up. Uh, exactly. And, 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 that's, and that's why I'm like, I'm starting to think like not to even trust like a lot of this stuff. Even when even it's like all of our uh men that we looked up to, they come out the cause. Look at Will Smith getting bent over. Come on, man. That that hurted a lot of men. Like if that's why, the root, no. why? Yeah. Because in in a man's in, in from a man's perspective, that is that is sad. That's like that's like the like watching a man get his manhood took like that, or, or yeah. just giving away his manhood. That's I had made. I had said this on my live, and everybody got freaked out about it. I'm not taking away of women getting great. That stuff just is serious. Yeah, but it's it's like a different. It, it hits different when when a man get his stuff. When you watch it, a man get you know that's that's like now I devastating, devastating. I mean, I don't understand because I'm not a man, but I understand why it's so, so much harsher for y'all to see. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. And, and you know what's crazy? It's like some men, obviously some men willingly do that. You know what I'm saying? But I think that a lot of them, after what I've been researching, a lot of them dudes go through a lot of things to get where they are. None of that stuff is free. All them men wearing dresses, all them women, do, look at Doja Cat dressing up like the devil every other day. Mm -hmm. Like they have, they, they have certain things and protocols they have to follow in order for them to even be, you know what I mean? Right. And then like the public humiliation type of stuff yes. for black men is to make black women, you know how they said the Willie Lynch letter was fake and all the other type of stuff, but like, like you know how you get to see black men getting brutalized and 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 in public. Like we the only people that you can see get brutalized on YouTube or without getting flagged. Like yep. they this it's like they sending a message to all the rest of us blacks, and especially to black women, not to view us as protectors, especially with men with money. Yeah. Like Bill Cosby, that man was eighty years old. Like this man got dementia. How are you gonna charge somebody with dementia? And really hold, how can he really hold up in court? He don't remember nothing. You know what I'm saying? He got dementia. Um, I, I think with whatever, I don't know if Bill's, Bill is guilty or innocent or whatever that is, but like, I'm with you. That shit was so long ago. Like, what the fuck are we doing at this point? Like, seriously. But again, that's the control that the industry have on these people. You don't get to be as you are. You don't get to do what you want to do. You do what we do. The moment you don't, I'm pulling one of them strings that's going to really, you see what I'm saying? And right. I believe that's what's going on with Diddy. I also believe two things can exist at the same time. He really did abuse Cassie. But I believe that there's a reason why she is the only person out of all these people who had all these issues with Diddy who can slide on in and be able to make a change. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like with Diddy, like, it's almost scary when you when you uh, when you a man of that caliber, you cannot just be messed with any type of woman. It's like the pickings of women get very slim, and every it seems like all of the women is looking to manipulate and use that that great car or that abuse car. Mm -hmm. It's like every, what woman don't want to do that if they don't give a really give a fuck about P Diddy. It's just that they get close to him, they either give him a baby and get child support have sex with him and say he, he great there and, and and they always end up with some money you know always end up with some money at the end let me tell you this as a woman if i was a gold digger and i was trying to get something from a nigga especially somebody like diddy the last thing i would do is say he great me that's like the final straw like all other options are exhausted i have no more cards in the back pocket because what i know is once i say this the amount of humiliation i'm gonna get for even saying that may not even be worth the money that I'm about to get. You see what I'm saying? Well, so the, I'm the, not the saying that they don't do it. They do it. They absolutely do it. But what I'm saying is if I'm really like a gold digger and I'm trying to, to gain something long term, at best I get pregnant. I mean that's the I mean that's like 101. Get pregnant. 
At so least he, if he don't be with you, he gotta take care of that kid. Right. But to say grape, I wouldn't do the grape because grape is too it's too risky. It's too much to go with it. You are gonna get people who hate you, even in regular life. When when a woman come out and say a oh, man did something to him, violated him, it sees men and women turn on the woman. So most women ain't gonna just go for that. Some will, but most won't. But look at the tension. Like we, we like we can't forget. Like a lot of women seeking it. Attention is currency, and then at the end of the day, they're not gonna get. She, it's not like if you accuse a man of falsely raping you, it's not like you're gonna go to prison or jail or nothing. Mm-hmm. And most men, most men, not gonna want to take that stuff to trial, even if you do accuse him, even if it, it, even if it didn't happen. Just to, mm-hmm. just to say that you've been with Diddy, be have been with Diddy, that's like a lot of attention. Now that woman could become popular. Look how they did with um, uh, Charlemagne. That girl with Charlemagne. I believe her too. She was a child. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've listened to you, and I understand where you're coming from as far as the man is concerned. However, this industry is effed up, and they make these men do this to rise on the ladder for mm-hmm. money. And if you pay attention. The men are attacking the younger women who are uh, who don't care nothing about a bag. That's all they want is a bag. And if it means them getting money, because as you can see, you got a lot of people who just started out who, who are getting famous off of the internet, mm-hmm. just you know, showing pictures of their bodies, showing them showing themselves to get attention from people like Diddy. Once they get that attention, and drugs is prominent now. Yep. So it's easy for a female to take a, a pill and their minds go crazy. I honestly believe with every bone in my body that all of this stuff is true. I do not think any of it to be false. I yeah. listened and I paid attention to a lot of different blogs. I've read a lot of different things and I've also realized that he attacked her and put her in this position when she was at a very young age. He recently just cut her off from the bag. He was paying her. He was giving her money all the time. He cut her off. She got so irritated. She said that they were like even texting back and forth recently. And he cut her off. And she got so irritated and so fed up. She said, I'm going to speak on it now. So as soon as the bag got cut off. I'm going to say this too. I also do believe that they do put us out there to basically have our minds against each other to a certain extent. Because I don't know. I, I wanted to speak on the fact I heard you speak on every, 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 every department as far as industry, music, church, all of that, but politicians as well. And this is something that's not being spoken on. They just did a huge bust, a, a human trafficking bust, where I'm talking about prominent politicians and stuff here in D.C., where they had a brothel down here for years and they finally bust them. They stopped talking about it, and now they're talking about Diddy. This is a huge. That's a huge lawsuit too. A, a, a huge page. I'm talking about fifty page some document of civil lawsuit that they stopped talking about over the last week because now Diddy is taking over the internet with his bullcrap. But we're talking about politicians. They've been doing this for years. They've been so having these little sex things with too. men and women for years. So I got a question, like. Cause I like it's a lot of women will be willing to believe stuff like that. Now let's let's flip it, right? Let's just say you take a what name a famous female star. Beyonce. Beyonce. Let's just say a couple of men accuse a woman, accuse Beyonce of sexual assaulting them, touching them without their permission or doing anything. Will y'all be so when it's the charge flipped on the other way around? And she could possibly go to prison or lose a lot of money. Like a lot of people got mad when uh, Mary J. Blige had to pay that man ch- uh, child support. Well, honestly, I, I would believe it. I would believe it because of the industry. I believe that when them girls came out and said Lizzo was calling them big fat exactly. exactly. and was that. telling them yeah, they did that. Yeah. Her. I believe it. I was one of the people. Hold on. I was one of the content creators saying lock Lizzo big fat nasty cheesy dirty ass up. Lock her up. Whatever they <laughs> said she did, she did that shit. That was me. This is, you know what? This is just me. Hold on, mute your mic, y'all. This is just not you, but this is just me. My thing is this. 
I don't look as a woman, and, and I get what you're saying, because a lot of women are biased when it comes to that type of stuff. But the, the fact of the matter is, when you think of collectively, women aren't typically sexually violent toward men. It's the opposite. So when you hear... When are you, you hear, serious about that? As a collective, yes, I'm positive. I I, I just think it's underreported because, like, for an example... That could be an aspect, too. Yeah, because girls was taught at a very young age when a man uh, touch you without your permission... That sexual assault, if a man do this, but on the other end, boys was taught if a girl touch you, boy, you in. That's that means you're a ladies' man. You know what I'm saying? So we weren't taught that when a woman come up here and rub on our chest without our permission, or just grabbing our arms, even groping our you know penis or brushing their booties against us, we wasn't taught to say, okay, that's sexual assault. But and I get that, but that's talk. We was about taught to be men. turned on. That's talk about other men, though. Women don't teach that to their sons. Hey, Voodoo, can I say something? Yeah. Hey, this is Talisha. Hopefully, you can hear me, hear me clearly. I um, can. For the gentleman, I don't know your name. Um, Jay Prince. Uh, Jay Prince. I'm Talisha. And first, I just wanted to let you know, in case you don't know, um, false claims of assault are less than two percent. So you might have some anecdote. Hold know, on, hold on. It's statistically oh, proven. It's statistically proven, and you can look it up. However, um, uh, so you may think that um, people, maybe in your anecdotal circles, you may have heard a story of a boy, one of your homies, getting accused of something that wasn't true. That's anecdotal. That's your small world. But if you look at the whole grand scheme of things and look at the reporting, it's less than 2%. May even be less than 5%, but last I checked, it was less than 2%. And no, men are not coming forward like they should to talk about what's happening to them because there is this uh, stigma against young men being able to tell what happened to them. And maybe had what happened to Charlemagne not happened to Charlemagne, he wouldn't have turned around and did it to that young girl. So when you hear that somebody comes forward with something like this, the ridicule, the scrutiny, the, you know, all the bad things that keep these men from talking is 90% why, 90% the reason why, one, women wait so long to tell what happened, and then number two, it is, you know, basically they're scared they're not going to be believed, and people will come up and give excuses like, Diddy could have had anybody. Everybody knows assault and SA is about control. It's not about, I, think, I can't get a girl. I can't do this. It's about control. It's, and he had control over her. Well, easy. let me just say this. And because we, we, we gotten off subject. We talking about, somebody put it in the chat. We talking about the industry versus the powers that be or versus us. And now we into the male women thing. I don't like that because it's the struggle Olympics, if you ask me. I personally don't like it. But let me just say no, this. but I do believe I do believe that young men are getting assaulted and they're oh, not yeah, talking absolutely. about it. And I believe that most young men who get assaulted won't come forward because they turn into grown men who won't come forward. So I believe that as well. But what I'm saying is in this situation, as it pertains to Cassie and the industry, yes, they the industry has a level of setting up these people to do whatever it is, you know, they want them to do by pulling certain strings. However, comma, in the instance with Cassie and this or things similar to this, it's easy to say a man is doing X, Y, and Z with another woman because typically that's normal behavior for men, whether you got money or not. But when it comes to the, the gay allegations, I'm talking about in the industry. I'm not talking about amongst the common right. folks. In the industry, they set these people up. Even with the abuse allegations, they set these people up to have certain things held over their heads. So whenever the day you decide to buck the system, they get to pull one of them strings. So I believe that whatever Cassie said he did, he did it. However, I believe Cassie's not the one pulling that string. It's the industry allowing her to pull that string because it actually happened. If it was all hearsay, she say, or he say, she say, we wouldn't even be here. The, 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 the DA would have threw it out, you know what I'm saying, off the cuff. Exactly. This is on but major news channels to like it. NBC and CBS and Good Morning America. Like, yes, Kiana just said it. They set them up for the control, and that's just what it is. And it ain't just men; it's women too. You don't see all the humiliation shit them celebrity women go through. Hell, Sukiana be crying every other week. And then back to the bullshit. You think she want to be back to the bullshit that make her cry? Them people pulling them strings. You see what I'm saying? That's just how it is. But and it's I, sad. 
Like, it is very sad, but this is the problem that I have. I don't even have a problem with the people pulling the strings. My problem ain't with the industry. My problem is, is with black people, aka niggas. And I ain't even I ain't even gonna just say nigga, niggas, black people in the diaspora, period. I saw a DeVito uh 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 advertisement where he had the one eye showing, and I knew right then and there, okay, DeVito, you on that that Illuminati shit. But what I'm saying that to say is like we sell each other to the highest bidder. Yeah. That yeah. If, if 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 the NAACP won a bunch of niggas who just wanted to get money and be down with the white folks, we wouldn't be where we would. If, Ma, if Martin Luther King ain't want to sell our ass up the river talking about we shall overcome, we will still have our own economics by now. Martin Malcolm is the only one who bucked the system, and you see what they did to him. We don't have graphic photos of Martin Luther King's actual shooting, but we got him a Malcolm. That's to teach the niggas down at the bottom stay in your place. But I'm saying that to say so we can move on because they got other people on the panel. The reason they're able to do what they're doing is because we are active participants. Diddy has been eating off high off the hog for a long time on the backs of black folks. I named all them artists that were signed the bad boy. None of them people have financially capitalized off of none of that hard work that they did. And that music and money still make that music still making money to this day. And them people don't get a red cent. Mm. So right now, in my opinion, it's Diddy Turn. Take your lick. And you know what? My thing is like the abuse, the sexual stuff is I understand that type of stuff really happened. And and I'm not taking away from the stuff that really happened to women. But I do believe that it's also used as a weapon. Yes, Especially for a man that's going to hire you up. It's no different from signing up for the military. If you sign up for the military, you, you want the benefits, you want to be able to travel, you want this, that, and the third. God forbid them people knock on your door and say you got to go to war. Guess what comes with that? Nigga, you got to go to war. So because of that, Although it's a possibility, not a probability, you're not looking toward that. That's 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 a part of it. You don't get to be famous. You don't get to have all these things and not pay for it. You, I, I hate the quota, but now I, I don't even hate the quota. Funky Dineva used to say, you either pay on the front end or you're going to pay on the back end, but you're going to pay. And that's what I don't feel sorry for these celebrities because that's what at some point they was up there signing their soul away to sell us up the river. And as long as they was making money, they was good with that. So it is what it is. But let me um move on to somebody else. You can stay up here and we can talk a little more. Hold on. All right. Rats, uh, Frozen Babe, what's up? I don't know if you can hear me. If not, let me go to Tiny. What's up, Tiny? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hey, boo. Yeah, so... um. And this Cassie situation is so sad because it's like they've been like doing this mind control thing and getting away with it. Because, you know, they say if they tell you, they get away with it. And I'm just like, even the name Bad Boys should have just did like a click in the brain. Like, this is not good stuff. But everybody mm -hmm. thinks, oh, it's just slang. That's what people, that's the cool kids say. And even like his whole mantra, uh, can't stop, won't stop bad boy and it's like how he couldn't stop beating you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. didn't didn't want to stop doing that and it's like uh the female rappers so we know biggie kind of created the modern day female rapper and did he you know he was a part of that and how like the culture just like the culture of a women in our community just really downgraded like why they were so they were beating these women, calling these women, degrading these women in they uh in their music, all type of stuff for what? You know what I'm saying? Like why attack the woman? Y'all so tough. Mm -hmm. Why do y'all have to attack these women? Especially Cassie. Like Cassie's a beautiful <coughs> woman. Why did you feel the need to attack her? Why do you hate her when you're so rich? You're so famous. Why is she still a threat to you? And that just goes to show like. The women in our community are so powerful, and the men know it. The men know I can't go nowhere. I can't be nothing without this woman, and and they really like don't like that. So they literally attack the women because it's like women don't be in the gangs. We not your enemy, but for some reason we get all the disrespect. We get all the beatings. Why? 
Uh, so that and two, the female rappers. I, I agree with you. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, hey, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. No, the female rappers, right? They're the ones that sing in Cassie's story. All the crazy stuff Cassie had to do, they're like singing that in their song and they're selling it to us. They've been mm -hmm. telling us we we do drugs, we get we beat up girls, we F all these dudes. That's how we get our that's you know, and they made it sound cool. They made it sound cool. Now we looking at the real story, like, wait, this ain't fucking cool. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to listen to no music no more. That's how traumatized I am by this whole situation. Like, I, I normally can like regulate my feelings, but I've I've read the whole 35 pages. I've read everything. That's why I'm like. How can y'all not believe this girl? This, the detail was crazy. Yeah, the detail was too much. Oh my god! Like, very traumatizing. Now I'm gonna read them trigger warnings. I'm, I'm gonna leave that trigger alone. Okay, I'm right. leaving. I'm, I'm not reading it <laughs> no more. I hear a trigger warning. I'm out. Okay, because I'm an Dang. empath. I'm an empath. I feel that when somebody telling me their story, I feel them. So I did not want to feel this. And they say this not even like everything in the industry they say it's more to this yeah it's crazy like Absolutely. so yeah um i'm not messing with the female rappers i love Nicki minaj i was a Nicki minaj fan Me and i'm thinking too. like why why do i like this so much why i think you went out tiny tiny must be driving And I like what you said that they trying to put us black men and black women against each other. Oh, they been did that. They did that. That was done long for the panorama. That was no, that was done in the in the seventies and eighties. But it's really got heightened in the last recent years. But ultimately, it's just like we listen. I feel like the man versus woman thing. That's small fries to what we really got. Man, we fuck up. I but you know what? Can't even write. Do you understand that our kids can't even? If you ask them to write, they can't write. They can't write. But you know what? I did a show on this, right? And how can I put this? When you look at black women from way back then, black people from way back then, and the black people today, then I looked up what would black people look like in like a hundred years from now. Was well, they say in forty years from now, we lighten up. We our skin tone is lighting up and lighting up year by year. What you call uh, black today is not really black. Like they used to have jet black people. Then we became this dark skinned people. Now we became like the little biracial looking. And they said in the next hundred years, we we gonna, it's called black caucus. We're gonna be all white. But don't don't let them be. Listen, don't listen. See, this is what the government does. The government will say they, that. Government who told black people they were the minority when we all know we are the majority, not the minority. Don't listen, they got some people, some black people that are gonna procreate with clear people and they're gonna create a mixed race of people like they had before. They used to call them mulattoes. This ain't Mulatto. the first time they had mulattoes, which I didn't understand why people were so ashamed and upset when Lotto had her name is mulatto. She is a fucking mulatto, she's a biracial, that's what she is. Right. What I'm saying that to say. There is a populace of black people that is going to coexist and co-create with clear people. That's fine. But they are trying to tell us mentally that we're going to dwindle down because they're already dwindling down. Don't believe that. When I pay attention to my daughters in schools, like they always parent like in the in the posters or cartoons. They or like skin, or they biracial. No, they pair they they pair like black girls with white. Oh men, yeah, Asian men. So it's that number is, is 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 elevating. Biracial making That's is all elevating. They but they've been doing that for the longest. Let me get somebody else really quick. Hold on, stay up here, Jay. Oh, uh, what's going on, Talisha? I'm that was me stating my little facts, uh, Voodoo. I, I can I can stand down and let somebody else come up. Okay, Pawn, all right, I'm gonna come right back to your pawns back. Okay, here. love. Hey, Boo, how you doing? Hey, Boo. Okay, so three points real quick. The will, the will thing, people gay. So if he gay, let that man be gay in peace and happy. Like, I'm tired of that. Like, they go so far in on black men about being gay. But people didn't go in on Charlie Sheen, and he was out here giving people, you know, 
that. Mm-hmm. They didn't drag that man like that. So I'm like, okay, let that man be gay and happy in peace. Second, the daddy thing, this all started because he's, he sued C-Rock. The moment he sued them, it's the moment they came after him. They was like, are you going to sue us? We coming after you. If he dropped that lawsuit against them, I guarantee you all this will go away. I guarantee you that. Mm. Third, I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And the third thing I'm going to speak on is, I know y'all didn't talk about it today, but I'm going to talk about it. That Mr. Davis man, I don't feel bad for him. He was that same man up there with Tamar dragging Tracy when she was going through what she was going through. I don't feel bad for him. Yes. And Tamar let him do it. And that's her sister. She was going through what she was going through. I don't feel bad for Tamar. I don't feel bad for Mr. Davis. You read what you saw. While that girl was sitting up there going through her counsel thing, they bullied her. You can go back and you can watch the shows. She oh, yeah, I know on. the sisters did. The sisters, I used to hate the way they did Tracy. I fucking hated it. Tony wasn't as bad. But see that fucking Tamar? And really, it was Tamar to leave. I used to be like, how y'all ain't beat her up by now? She yes. the youngest too. Y'all should have been kicked Tamar ass. But I, I never seen that Mr. Davis was entertaining. I'm sorry, but I, that's messed up. That's I had to get that out because everybody been talking about him. Like, oh, we feel so bad for him. No, don't I like feel bad. Tamar. I used to like Tamar. I had a he, Tamar. Like the way the way he and Tamar did her and talked about her, and then the way she allowed it. Like that's your sister. This right. a man off the street. You know, I, I don't care. I don't have any sisters, but if I did, you're not going to talk about my sister. Exactly. You're not going to drag my sister. You got a problem with my sister. You got a problem with me. So, but the the only points I wanted to touch on real quick because it was like, well, we are, we know everybody in the industry gay. Everybody, even the women, we we know this. Okay. You're not going to drag Charlie Sheen down for doing what they're doing. Get up off of Will. See, here's here's the bad. That's because of the C Rock. We already know that. Hmm. I I guarantee you, if he dropped that lawsuit against them, it's going to be over and done with. And Mr. Davis. They can keep they can keep dragging him, but I'm gonna let y'all get on with the get on. Good show as always, and I'll be waiting for the next one. Thank you, pause back here, baby. Thank you. Here's the thing. With wait, wait, hold up. Before you say that, let me read these super chats. Um, thank you, Tawana. She says, thank you for the super chat. She said, remember how pop, how puff balls acted narcissistic as hell on um, making the band is his time to pay the devil rest in peace pop girl when he made them niggas go i was there i remember sitting in front of the tv do you hear me tawana when he told them niggas to go walk to brooklyn now i don't know how where they was i to this day don't know how far brooklyn was but to me it sounded like that nigga was telling me to walk from new orleans to the statue of liberty i remember saying to myself bitch I don't give a damn if I've been praying to be a singer all my life. I had to fight. That would be the day I would tell Diddy to suck my blah, 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 blah. And when I watched him walk over there to the, get the cheesecake, all oh, to bring it back, and Diddy just like, all right, I'm going to get y'all studio time. I was like, I didn't even realize that I was internalizing not even internalizing i was understanding this as a humiliation like how the fuck you make niggas walk to a whole nother city to get you a cheesecake my nigga and they did listen diddy was hell on making a band y'all remember he got into it with Lorraine gibson the boom cat lady that nigga i didn't even see the show this is his karma. He deserved everything he get to Wanda. I'm with you. And, and we still don't know what's going on with Pac, girl. Girl, Diddy is, this has been leading up to Diddy. Mo- Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kiki Spencer. She said, my ex-husband's father was a pastor for years. Sunday morning, he would preach the word of God. Sunday night, he would beat his wife in front of their kids. He had a baby with a side chick as well. Girl, let me tell you something. I, there's not a pastor on the face of this earth. If you got a good pastor, shout out to you. But to me, he's a crook. And I hate that that happened, Kiki. Um, I'm sorry that that happened to uh, your your husband's father. Well, not him, but to the people that suffered under him. But that's crazy because a lot of them live double lives. And they do that so that they can have the control over the people. And then when they do get out, it it'd be a whole bunch of black women saying, he's human. He's not perfect. Jesus wasn't perfect. The disciples was robbers and killers and that, that shit your ugly ass up. If this nigga smoking weed and sleeping with 50 left women in the church, 
He's a sinner. Cast this nigga out of the church. Why is y'all around here talking about he not perfect? Nigga, I'm not perfect. But when I came up here and told y'all I was pregnant by the nigga, uh, the girl husband, y'all wanted to hang me at the stake by high noon. But because it's the pastor, oh, he not perfect. He not perfect. Fuck the pastor. That's just me. Wait, Voodoo, you said you was pregnant by what girl's husband? No, I'm just saying. I'm using that as an example. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just using that as an example, though. But no, for real, that's how I be. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I don't care about no damn pastor. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, wait, really quick. Thank you, Tawana, uh, for the super chat. She said, woman power. This is the year of Aquarius and balance. They are receiving karma for their evils. Absolutely. One trillion percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Kiki Spencer. Um, Oh, I think I read that one already. Hold on. Let me see. Did I read? Oh, Tawana, thank you for the super chat. She said, this is not a conspiracy against the men you are you worship. They are being exposed for their evil. Stop making excuses and hold them account accountable. Absolutely. This is not a... I, I feel like there are some conspiracies in Hollywood, but in this situation, this ain't no conspiracy. Diddy is a horrible person. He did a lot of black people really bad to get to where he's at, he's at and he's getting his karma back, period. And that's I just, just on, on that. I just really think... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I got some more. So Wanda said, why do why do broke men bring attention to a rich man's issue like they know if a woman is a gold digger or not? Tawana, you've been sending up some super chats, huh, girl? I think I feel attacked. <sighs> you talking about me? I don't know, child. Tawana say they sold out for money. Thank you for the super chat. She also says, Mr. Take That is jealous of women. I I don't know. He may, I believe so. He might be. I do believe Diddy is, is jealous of women. I do believe that. Thank you, Marie, for the super chat. She said, your intellect is deep, and I love your commentary. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Shonda, what's up? Hey, girl. Hey, boo. Listen, y'all on fire tonight. Understand that. Um, the instant I heard about this Cassie thing, y'all, my stomach, like it's been on my mind ever since. Like it bothers me. Mm -hmm. And you remember you, you would see her on TV and she looked so sad. Mm -hmm. I, whatever he has coming to him, I need it to be to the 10th power. And like I said yesterday, I was listening to me. He has daughters and karma's a, you already know. Mm -hmm. It may not very well come back to him. It may come to his kids. Yeah. But they don't think along those lines. And I and I don't understand. I do. I heard about the Ciroc thing. And even if he drops the lawsuit, it's too late now. It's in the hands of the DA and the state attorney. They're going to go forward against and, they, and they're going to go forward against um, P. Diddy. Because they got to save face. Yeah. So there, that's not going away. And I just hope it, I just hope that whoever else is involved gets drugged too. And he might snitch. So he might take somebody down with him. As he should. If I was R. Kelly, I'd have been like that boy on New Jack City. It wasn't me. It was Kareem Akbar, the educated <laughs> brother from the bank. If I'm going down, I'm taking a whole bunch Yo, of she on me. Fire you think I'm going to jail by myself. <laughs> Nigga, is you crazy? Yes. I'm going to be naming people who wasn't even there. Come on. Nigga, Bow Wow was in on it too. <laughs> Fuck it. Bring him up here. The Everybody got to go down. Is you crazy? <laughs> you think I'm going to sit in that jail cell by myself? Girl. Please. You know what? Maybe it serves as a reminder. Hopefully, it'll it'll curb, if not completely stop, what's going on in the industry because it's so it rampant. It won't. And let me tell you why. And this this ties into what Queen Revolution said. What, what Carisha gonna do? Let me tell you something. These pe Black people are so disenfranchised and so poor yes. that we will do any and everything for money. Yep. Carisha looking at it like this. I'm with a billionaire. And I'm never leaving him. Boom! I don't care what y'all broke hoes say because from where she's okay. sitting, we all broke. Even Casey. if we got money, we broke to Carisha now. Now. Carisha feels like, hold on, he a billionaire. 
He got money. I'm not messing up my bag. That's fucking right. With you. And it's not just Carisha. It's a lot of people in, in the industry, period. Nobody wants to sacrifice their personal gain to help nobody else. That's why as black people, that's why we will remain at the bottom. The white people don't do us the worst as they do. It's us that do us worse. Do each other. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You said a word then, ma'am. All right. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to sit right here and, and, right and just, there, we finna go on with it. Let's go. Okay. The, let's go. I, the problem is we don't do nothing about it when that type of stuff happens. Like, okay. Like we, we see these people because you got to think like old girl came up here and she said uh, was let Will Snow be gay. These big names, all they names just travel all around the globe. So a lot of people got their image based off what the rap rappers and all these big names so the image that is that they paint to the world that black men is gay black men is grapists black men are all of this by by like pete diddy and him he big all over the globe so a lot of people they they get their beliefs based on these type of celebrities yeah and but so jay then prince, they begin to believe we all like this but jay prince this is the problem you making it an issue of 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 uh of what do you call it? You're making it a a a, a sex issue, like a, a gender issue. It's not. When we're talking about the industry, everybody can get it. You don't think they run through the women of the industry the same way? It's not about gender. See, this, I say this all the time. Racism is a poor man's game. Classism is a rich man's game. What does that have to do with this? Y'all sitting up here um talking about well you're sitting up here talking about black men black men when he's in that sector amongst them clear people with all that money who gives a fuck about a black man or a black woman it's status my nigga them people is gonna do whatever it is to keep money in their pocket and you at bay nigga man or woman i don't care who you is if you think beyonce don't have nobody to answer to you foolish i'm talking about to, if you think oprah don't have nobody to answer to you foolish that's just the game that they in. See, we at the bottom. We looking at the back and forth that we go back and forth with, with other men and women down here with Kevin Samuels and all of them. No. <laughs> these people got bigger fish to fry. We ain't even fishing in the same pond as these people. And it's not about gender. It's just classism. Them people feel like as black people, as a social class, we are beneath them. And they're going to forever keep their foot on our necks because they hold the power and we crave their power. That's the hey. problem. We crave their power. We crave being able to sit at the foot of these people. So until we figure that part out, we're going to always be where we at. And Voodoo, I think I kind of get what Jay Prince is saying. I think it's more like the representation. And I get that. And that makes sense. But what we as a black community have to do is stop making your P. Diddy's, your Will Smith, our representation. We need to start making the Cornell West's our, our representation, the doctors, the lawyers. I actually kind of like, like Brother Cornell. Um, he, he's made some questionable choices, but he still want to socialize and take care of the people. So I'm with him to an extent. But I, as what I'm saying is we need to start making doctors, lawyers, scholars. Those need to be our representation. I don't want P. Diddy to represent me. I don't want Charlemagne the God to represent me. It actually makes me cringe when they go talk to a rapper instead of going to speak to somebody in the state house or the, or the courthouse to represent me because that does not represent me. So I honestly don't care how these famous people look because that's not me and that's not what I'm raising my daughter to look like. I'm raising my daughter to be somebody and to think more of herself than just I can get a record deal or I can put a ball in a hoop. Right. Absolutely. Y'all take a look at this really quick. I had to put this up there. Somebody mentioned it earlier, but I want to talk about it. All leaders. This included. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they called leaders, this included Lena Horn, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, trumpets, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and or over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. And it is an honor, actually, that they endorsed Dr. Martin Luther King hmm. and uh, 
uh, were against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's actually an honor. Now, when you say that they also, in the same Newsweek poll magazine, they, they, I think the pollster said that he went into the Negro community and asked about the Muslims. And I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call so leaders. So listen to what I'm saying. This man was speaking this stuff in the early to mid 60s. The same thing is literally happening in 2023. That is almost 60 years, if not a little bit close, if not close to at 60 years later. The same shit is happening. Your mm -hmm. trumpet players will be your rappers. Your Lena Horns will be your actors and actresses, your Denzels and all of these people. These people are put in place for a reason, and there's a string. They put these niggas on leashes. See, y'all not, let me let me put it in layman terms so maybe y'all can understand. Maybe y'all will understand it this way. When you sign up to be in the industry, I don't give a damn if you signing up for the podcast people. The music people, the film people, all the, all the singing people, the dancing people, the, the entertainment people, the sports people, your football, basketball, soccer, baseball. I don't care what it is you signing up for. Them people have a string that they pull. You have a script. You have a script and you have a straight and narrow that you need to go. If any time you sway from the disobedience, or from the obedience that we are teaching you, we will pull your string. And when we pull your string, it looks a lot like a lot of things we see a lot of black celebrities go through that clear celebrities don't go through. But what I'm saying is the problem I have with that is not even the fact that they pulling strings. The problem is I have, we have a whole bunch of black people, like Malcolm X just said, Lena Horn, Dick Gregory, all these people we revere is just so great. So this, that, a third. They all signed the contract to sell you, to sell you. They don't, listen. Y'all can sit up here. I used to be like that, so I'm not. I'm not judging, but I'm gonna just say this. Y'all can sit up here and think that these people had y'all best interest at heart. Them people was cashing checks behind the scenes. Them people was cashing checks. That's why I wish we could have did this educational Friday because I have a clip, a long clip of Malcolm X talking about how Martin Luther King, all everybody in the snake and all these people was making money while they had niggas over there locked in talking about we shall overcome. Them niggas was making money. But we gonna wait. We'll deal with that on another time frame. But I'm saying that to say, I don't feel sorry for these people because they walk into this shit to sell you. So you cannot automatically feel like, oh, well, I don't know. This person might be this. If they up them, they not you. I'm on a slight disagreement. I don't think they're trying to sell us. I just think when it comes to no, black they people. Are. I, I just think when it comes to black people, they done painted this picture to us of becoming famous and becoming rich and to the point where we be so, our whole mission of in life, is to become rich and be famous and get all the money in the world. And That's our that. mission. But listen how they sell that. They use other black celebrities to sell that to you. When Deion Sanders was up there hollering, must be the money. You know how many little boys wanted to be football players behind that shit? When, uh, when LeBron James and Michael Jordan was jumping from the three, free throw line, you know how many little boys wanted to play basketball behind that shit? Michael Jordan wouldn't even put $20 into the Negro college fund. But that nigga was up there hooping from the free throw line and telling niggas, get it how you live. They selling you. You y'all don't listen. That's why I say leave your feelings at the door and put your thinking caps on. I don't name a celeb. I'm going to tell you how they selling you. I don't care who it is. You can name an old celebrity. You can name a new celebrity. Every single black celebrity sold you up the river for their own personal gain. It's the same reason why Jeezy and all these other rappers could rap about this, that, and the third. And they say, but my turn don't listen to that. What Cardi B said. She made what for your kids to listen to. But when it came to her talking about her kids listening to it, what Cardi B said. Oh, my kids don't listen to that. They up in there talking about, hold on, somebody off mute. They up in there talking about baby shark, do, 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 do. While your, while your daughter up in there saying, put this C on his face, make him da, da, da. Y'all, listen. Listen to me. Megan, all of them. None of them. Do I need to play it again? I, I feel like I, I, I just, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't. Please wake up.
Do you hear me? None of your faves give a fuck about you. They sold you so that they can make personal gain. That's why Cameron could be a part of Dipset with the shine, with the pink hoodie and the pink furs and the chain and be like da 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 and all the oh and oh uh, Jim Jones and all them niggas and talking about being on the block when they sons go to fucking private school, my nigga. Y'all got to be strong. I'm gonna move on really quick. Kimmy dog, what's going on? I agree. Hey, doll, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, wonderful, because I'm driving. I am so, oh, I'm so over um, Puffy. Anyway, I, I'm old enough to remember when Puffy booked his first show. He overbooked the show, and there was, people got trampled to death. That was Puffy's first big show in New York. I don't know how many other New Yorkers is out there that remembers that. People died behind that, so they knew. Puffy was like the Travis Scott back then. This was before he even got big. This was at a gym. I forget. Mm -hmm. I, it might have been in Brooklyn. But he oversold the show. People got trampled to death. And so Hollywood knew that he was one of these people that would be willing to sacrifice other people because he continued to grow after that. His label continued to grow. He continued to get other artists, even though he oversold that show. Now, when, when you're talking about um, the Cassie situation, people are, I don't know if people realize this, but I believe she married Puffy's bodyguard, one of Puff, somebody that worked for Puffy, a clear man that worked for Puffy, who I believe, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I believe he was Puffy's handler. And the only way she could get out of it was to marry somebody that would have documentation, which I believe this man has in either um, video and audio and all kinds of stuff. Not only about Cassie, but probably about Kim Porter and other things that this clear man helped him handle. And Cassie ended up marrying this dude. That's why um, when other people, black people, tried to escape Puffy's grip, they all ended up murked out mm. and um she didn't because she it she had the proof if you look at you know her as a preference and i'm not saying you know kim wasn't beautiful or whatever kim was a very beautiful woman but that wasn't a preference and she didn't have the complexion for the protection nor did she have the clear individual who knows everything why you think P puffy knew cassie knew all this stuff about him but yet he might have beat her ass, but he didn't kill her and he and he didn't target her and he ain't going to target her because of the person that she married. Y'all look that up. Um, she married somebody that was already in his camp. And I believe that person was probably a handler planted there. Like you said, when when he first, you know, got on, uh, people have these um, gaps in their soul where these demons can get into. And I hate to keep bringing up Doja Cat. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but Doja Cat, is, Do Doja Cat is telling you. She's saying it out loud. What is going on? And so it, it's not a it's 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 a, a open secret that she's telling you. It's about the bag, and we're selling you for the bag. You, I don't care about my fans. I don't care about what my fans think. You still gonna buy my music? I'm gonna sell you down the river so I can make my my paper, and that's what it's about. And that's the same thing Puffy did. And so you know, Puffy did a lot of things. Why you think Kim? Um, you talked about Little Kim, and why she you know ended up looking like she looked. The reason was because Puffy and them had that girl thinking, you know, if you you brown skin, you dark skin whatever i i consider us brown girls dark um you're not attractive but faith came along you know faith was considered attractive or whatever her mind ain't, ain't all the way gone i mean she on the drugs and all that but that was part of their culture remember mary was on drugs too so they was mm -hmm. all being controlled by drugs and all the other things and and you know puffy was a part of that lifestyle and yes they, you know, come in, you got to look at where we come from as people. And I don't want to go on and on, but a lot of us come from impoverished communities that never had anything. So when, when you're offered that money like that, 
and you you know you you have to maybe sleep with somebody or a old man you know what i'm saying like a jay-z for beyonce or like um a dame dash for Aaliyah or no. r kelly you know when when he, that that's going all the way back and like you said these people even whitney I brought that no. up in the comments. Whitney Houston was also a, a child that, remember, her mom was in the industry already, and she signed with Clyde. So think about Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey was sold to Tommy Mottola at a young age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they wasn't all the way mature women yet. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's not, it's not just, Mariah just happened to escape, you know, but, but not really, because she ended up with that Nick individual. So it, it's, you know, humiliation rituals. It's all kinds of rituals. And you're right. They're not looking at what's best for us as a community, okay? Yeah. Or as a, I, I call African-Americans, we're our own subculture within, within the United States. They're looking at what's best for their pocket and their legacy personally. And that's why we don't have anything. And the right. other, the, the person who is also, I support besides Malcolm's message, was Booker T. Washington. So he was the one I was trying to tell you about before who said we should keep our industry separate. Whatever industries they want to give us, you know, ironing clothes, making our little stores that used to be in people's houses where you could go and drop by and get you some watermelon and some water along your walk or whatever you was doing back in the day because it used to be in somebody's basement. It, it used to be, the, the, we used to call it the penny candy store. Your mama could send you there for some Lucy cigarettes and stuff like that. But then we we wanted to integrate. And then we integrated ourselves right out of our legacies and in, in everything else. Yep. But uh, everything that you're saying is absolutely 100% true. But I just want people to realize that it was already known about Puffy that he would be willing to sacrifice anyone and anything to get to where he wanted to go because when he booked his first show, there was people that was trampled to death and somehow or another, that whole case got, got of um, course. you know, gotten rid of. But that's all I wanted to say. And thank you, doll. We, we appreciate you educating thank you. us. Thank you for educating the young people, you know, keeping, keeping everything 100 with people, you know. Um, and I think that um, for the gentleman that's on the stage right now, and I'm not trying to, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings or whatever, but um, black men have to start taking responsibility for their, for the things that they do. Um, one in five African-American women are touched before the age of 19, 18, 19 years old by someone in their vicinity sexually. So you, we have to start, stop trying to say that, oh, these men, you know, they're not really doing this stuff. I'm talking about regular, regular people, regular us that's touching our daughters, sisters, you know, our men that's doing this. When you listen to the red pill community, who do they tell you to go after? Oh, you got to get the woman between the ages of, you know, 18 and 23. Why do you think they're saying that? Because they want to be exploited. And Cassie's situation just proves that. So now I'm going to step back down. Thank y'all for listening to me. I'd like to hear the opinion of some other people. Thank you, doll. We love you. Thank you so much. Love you, babe. Thank you. Shout out to that sister. She was speaking facts. She was. She really was. Shout out to the she sister. She definitely was. Let me say this. Somebody, uh, Caramelly Mel responded to um, Keisha K talking about Beyonce working hard. I, let me agree to you. Let me agree to this. As far as presentation and shows, Beyonce is the 2023 level of like top tier entertainment we have to be able to separate that from this just because she's able to put on a great show don't let that blind you to the fact that she's a capitalist just like diddy she's gaining off of you just like diddy you're no different from we're no different walking going by them i've seen the ticket prices over there for beyonce us paying them ridiculous amount of t prices for the tickets that's not including airfare because most of our places be somewhere you gotta fly to in hotel and all of this i've seen the prices we might as well go walk get the cheesecake too i think beyonce is an amazing artist but i also understand that beyonce is in the industry that's all I'm going to say. I, I, 
Because I don't want to upset nobody. I know how these fan bases get. Shout out to Caramelly Mel. She said Beyonce is high ranking witch who doesn't care about nobody but Blue Ivy. I don't know if she a witch or not, but let me just say this. I will say this. She is a part of the industry that should not be trusted. Period. That's just that. And uh, let me move on. Hold on really quick. Um, Let me get... Don't call me half breed. What's up, boo? Hey, Voodoo. How you doing? Hey, babe. So, I kind of felt like you was going to call me up after that last caller, because uh, <laughs> I don't know how do you follow that up. <laughs> um, so, Jay Prince, that's your name, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't want you to feel singled out or attacked. What I want you to feel is that we're trying to explain something to you to take it back to the man cave because, <laughs> <laughs> because you're needed. You are needed. We, we need you. The women need you. And this situation is bigger than getting some money. This situation ain't about money. This is about power. Diddy pissed somebody off. He pissed somebody off. And it ain't about a man versus a woman doing it and, and you just call the men out because these women is out here doing the same thing. But they're not pissing somebody off. Diddy tried to make some kind of move. As come out. He tried to make some kind of move and whoever he tried to make that move against didn't like it. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, I don't take it like... Um that y'all that i feel why would i feel attacked oh because baby you've been attacked you just haven't recognized it yet um however <laughs> <laughs> this is not about cassie getting a little bit of money this is about power the powers that be and then um when it comes to representation i don't think we should be looking to entertainment for our children to have a representation of anything because ain't nothing on that tv anything they need to be seeing anyway everybody you see on that tv is part of the problem everybody you see on that tv has already signed their name that they'll do what they need to do to be able to be on that tv screen but this is my thing though uh i, I know what voodoo was saying earlier about um is black men and, and black men, women have to face this but the problem is even though we know like this would be embarrassing to me like black men and black women know for a fact of what they up against with these other people right why in the fuck would you participate or sign up or even air out your dirty laundry the reason why we the reason why we think white women is good for us and white men is good for y'all and all this other type of stuff. You know why? Because you don't you don't hear them really on a large number bashing each other, putting their business out there. That is so fucking irritating to see black men and black women is willing to do stuff like that. The, the these other races, we look at them like they are good because they don't air out their business. That's that's a, that's a cultural difference. That's a cultural difference. And Our culture reason, sucks then. That's, yo, you're right. That's exactly where I was going with it. We fucked up, not them. Listen, I tell people all the time, when people get mad because a, a clear person is racist and they don't want black people in their neighborhood, it's about to sound really bad. But they not wrong. We wrong. Why we don't want? Why we don't love each other enough to where we don't have to live amongst them? Why do we have to live amongst yes. them? And people say they don't want us around. Fuck it. Why we can't build our own? But we so oh, absolutely. I'm in agreement okay. with that. Absolutely. That's Who what I was thinking about. Say it again. Because we have allowed money. See, the thing is, and I be telling black men this on my channel. Y'all, they don't, they don't, uh, like, black people have allowed them to trick us out of our original uh, goal with money. We, we instead of chasing our our own liberty and building our own empire, where we don't have to work for, continue to build the, the strength of the white man's foot on our necks, why not build our own type of stuff? But we have got tricked out of our, our original goal and to chase money. And when we do get money, the most thing we do is go buy stuff, go buy shit that don't matter.
that don't mean nothing. And now they they say that I uh, I'm jealous of people with money. I hate people with money. It's not that I hate black people with money. I hate black people that get money and start to feel comfortable. Like we is not a uh, disenfranchised here in America. We still at the bottom just because a few niggas I got a few dollars. Now all of a sudden, like that money supposed that money supposed to be. Getting, I would say the money is supposed to be used to build our legacy. We don't have no systems. Our women and children and, and men got to go to other races and beg for resources. Blame Martin Luther King. I did a whole <laughs> live on it. I'm a Malcolm X type of guy. A matter of fact, me and Malcolm X got the same Blame person. the reason. I just Listen, let's just put a bow on this so we can move on because we got other people up here. It's almost a four-hour live, girl. I'm tired. Let me just say this. If you want to know why black people are so dependent upon the clear people, whether it's financially, emotionally, physically, whatever it is, blame integration. Yeah. Period. Go ask Martin Luther King. Get the white medium lady, the clear lady who was talking to Kim Porter. Have her get Martin Luther King big head ass up here and ask him why would he do what he did? Other than that, we ain't got no more discussion. We already fucked up. And it's at this point, unless we really grab our children and teach them and understand and make them understand what's going on in this world, which I do not see happening because we got 40-year-old Christian animals, that tells me right then and there, we dead. Period. If we got 40, 50, and 60-year-old Christian animals, the children are doomed. Do you hear me? Because everything starts with the children because I got to move on. But I'm saying this to say, if we depended on the clear man, it, it, it's our fault because we're actively dependent upon them. However, this is something that has been put in place by your boy, Mr. Martin, Marty Maud, Luther King. Let's move on. Hold on, Tanika Cox, what's going on? Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, boo. Hey, so um, I definitely was inspired to jump on. First off, I want to say an yeah, incredible conversation. We definitely need to do this much, much more. Um, but also, um, I'm just a sister that stay on fire for people. Um, I try to, I've been involved in so many things that support our, our future, our culture over my years. You know what I mean? Marches, you know, um, uh, you know, riots, anything I can get involved with to push us. And it's like you said, it's at a level now where you want to throw in the towel because our people cannot see the forest for the fucking trees. You know what I mean? And and you get a boost every now and then with the brothers in Alabama that swam out and gave that ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? And you get a boost every now and then when you see some of the stuff going on with George Floyd and, and the rebellion in it, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, Trey Martin and, and, you know, so uh, Trayvon Martin, but it's so needs to be pressed upon our people to separate what we are actually doing in real life and who we are supporting. I see more people coming out to support somebody famous that they ain't never met a day in their life and won't give somebody in their family crying out for that same help, even a, a minute to hear what they saying. And why don't we believe it? What makes that person better than anybody else you know? If you know a creepy John from up the street or in the family, we all got one that's weird and do weird stuff. Why do you believe this person is innocent? Just because they got some money. Right. Just because you've been seeing them on TV a long time, you don't even know who that is. When, you know, I know we talk about marching and doing all that, but I'll tell you what gets me hot. When I see people out here marching all day long for R. Kelly's and Cosby's, and not that they haven't done incredible things, but you took time out your day to do it, you don't even know them. Hmm. You wasn't there. You don't know. You don't know. Why would we... <laughs> I know more women that have been molested than I know men. And I do know that's happened to men. And for me, it's all gross and nasty. Anybody doing it need to be locked up. It, it's not a gender thing. It's not a gay thing. It's not a light skin, dark skin thing. It's a, you have a sick problem and you just as problematic as the female is problematic, you know, but when we start getting into these divides and letting Krishans and, you know, these people get us, you know, divided and divert our attention from where we need to be focused on. You are right, Voodoo. You are right. When we, we needed to be separate 
but have our own stuff. That right. integrating, that integrating, it's never going, we never going to be free on this soil. Our people is buried in the soil. We mm. built this place. Reparations comes up about every five years. That boogeyman comes up. Oh, they talking about reparations. <laughs> oh, they talking about, re they've been saying reparations since I was born. I'm 46 years old. Exactly. It's all of these things that keep you entranced and keep you driven. You know, I got a whole lot of my own conspiracy theories. I don't even think, uh, what's his name? Lil Nas X. I don't even think that nigga's really gay. I just for think real. he'll do whatever for the dollar. We, girl, we on the same page. You just do whatever for the dollar. And if our people can't see that and know that when you, what you do in real life, this is entertainment, man. This is all shine and glittering you know what i mean let them fuck up their life but when you take your babies home make sure you watching what they watching on this tv don't let them listen to everything you listen to they not old enough they shouldn't just hear profanity like that you shouldn't live in a household where people fight every day but when we bring it up oh nobody want to talk about it they want you to you know that's just how they do over there though. but if we don't say nothing and don't call it out whatever gets done about it because clearly marching and crying and praying is not going to bring us freedom, right? So mm -hmm. now what do we do? I That's think always my should, question to my people. I, I think what say, we should me, do. Let me say this really quick. See, next Friday, I don't care what's going on. We're going to go over that documentary I put up here. And we're going to show how the people was marching in the early 60s, in the mid-60s. And how when the people was ready for action, how the NAACP, shout out to Star Child 9. She said the NAACP was not established by African Americans. Let's make that crystal clear. Anyone standing with that group is a sellout. Listen, Linda. Listen. <laughs> How did, old girl, how did old girl even cosplay and get in the NAACP? We can make fun of her and call her out. What's her name? Dozal or whatever her name was. But, uh, no, not Dozal. She's, she's oh, Rachel Dozal. Dozal. Yeah. Dozal. That's your fault. If you sat up over her and didn't realize what was going on, no, she's stupid, but who's really dumb? How did she get that far? You don't think they know who she was? We no, didn't know. That's what I'm saying. We so didn't know. Now, Man, don't make a big thing now and divert our people. And it just, it's constant. It's constant. The juicy smolliers, you know what I mean? The, all these events that keep going on to keep you diverted from what you need to be focused on. And I just implore everybody who's on here tonight hearing me, make sure you watching over your family. Make sure you looking at what they take in through what you want them to have to hold on to. Know that nobody on this earth is above you. So if you don't think you should, if you know that you are a king or a queen, then you don't feel bad for such and such because they got to live and die just like you do. Queen Elizabeth ain't no better than me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? The president ain't no better than me. Puffy show ain't better than me. And none of these other people I watch because I wouldn't walk in that kind of light. But I command what I want. I, I walk in the light of respect. And that's what I get. I walk as a queen. And that's what I get. And when you take your, you know, when you take your crown off and let them think they could play with your top. Oh, that's just what they'll do. Know your enemy because they know you. And that's all I wanted to say, sweetie. I appreciate that. Y'all have a good night. Hey, y'all take care. Peace. Thank you. Blessing. Peace all right. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Tanika just said a word. Y'all, limit the comments to two minutes. I got to get up out of here. Caramelized sugar, what's going on, baby? I like I like you, uh, Voodoo. You actually, you actually makes me smile. You're pretty funny. How I make oh, you smile? Is you up here flirting with me, J. Prince? A little bit. I was like, go ah! away. <laughs> J. Prince, go lay down, J. Prince. Go Where you from? Down. You from New Orleans? Huh? You from New Orleans? Born and raised. You know we uh, we used to go to family reunion. We have we used to have a family reunion up in New Orleans uh, every year. We used to go to the Mardi Gras and all that. Yay, Jay Prince, you gotta go lay down now. We got a show to go on. Stop doing that, Jay Prince. Hey man, we need to do. We need to collab together. Come on, my show. Give me on my e email out. me. But if you on there with that manosphere shit, I'm gonna come out there and cuss all them niggas. The come fuck and cuss out. them out. You might have to cuss me out a ten times. Listen, if I go over there. Y'all know that boy. <laughs> y'all on that bullshit. I'm gonna have all the dogs get over them. Oh, Voodoo, I was about to tell you, bring me with you. Bring me Girl, with you. Y'all can come on. Y'all come on. I'm, I'm loading up the clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's what they do. Don't do it. Don't give no, it. No, no, it's all love at it. the end of the day. We don't got no, it's, it's all love. I don't do day. no man of shit. Them niggas is weird. Them incel niggas, them niggas is Bam. weird. Bam. Them niggas, Bam. Damn near, they damn near devil worshipers as far as I can. Well, I'm, I'm not man of 
Oh, I'm not saying you is. I'm just saying I don't do that type of shit. But let me move on. Hold on, J. Prince. Stay up there because we got to get up off here. It's, we've been on this thing four hours. Girl, what's going on? Every time I say we're not going to do no more time. Here we go. Caramelized sugar. What's going on, baby? Hey, Foodoo. How you doing? Wonderful, baby. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, So I just want to touch on, I like what? Um, most people were saying up here. So I just wanted to sprinkle a little some some um, coming from New York, you know, Brooklyn. Oh, so, wow. yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sugar, sugar. I just want to know. Did they put something in y'all water up there in New York? Uh, I don't know what's going on over here. It's, it's getting out of control. Like You know, they say they had a water crisis over there in Detroit. Did it come over to New York? It seems like it did, because I don't know what's going on. Like, I'd be so lost every day, especially in the city itself. As soon as I step out of Brooklyn to the city, I get so irritated. You could feel it in the atmosphere, the tension. Like, you could be the most humblest person in some way, somehow, you will just have to curse somebody out. Oh, okay. Keisha K said it wasn't in Detroit. It was in Grand Rapids. Keisha, what? No, no. <laughs> Hold on, Keisha. Hold, hold on one second. Keisha, when I want to know about plantain and oxtails, I'm going to call you. Keisha, do you live in the States? Keisha, go lay down, Keisha. Love you down to the ground, Keisha. Y'all know Keisha, my girl. But Keisha, go lay down. Is you in New York? Keisha, if you're not in New York, girl, Keisha just want to be in New York so bad. You know what? You know, Keisha, you in New York, Keisha? Keisha says she in New York. What part? I'm going to send somebody over there to see if you over there, girl. Keisha, girl, let's move on. Wait, Keisha is frozen, babe. I thought she was in London. Girl, y'all y'all do too much. I can't. Go ahead, go ahead, my bad, girl. So, um, they got a Keisha in London? Keisha's all over the world. I don't know. Frozen Babe got 50 lemon pages on here. But like all the video, like the video from all your pages, Frozen Babe. Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, I would say coming from New York and being a 90s kid, Diddy, I, I feel like now he's trying to make a new image for himself for this young generation. And it's like, what are you trying to do? You need to lay down, sir. You need to go to sleep because you're trying to make brother love all of this BS going on. And meanwhile, it's like, sir, you've been walling now for a very, very long time. We all right. been watching you. We all been seeing how you go off the handle. As the woman was saying earlier, when it comes to the nightclub, that's when it really started because he was the first Travis Scott making three people get killed. As I was told about that, because I was just a, a baby baby. But being in New York, you hear stuff. So Hearing that and then coming from the, the club of the shooting with J-Lo, she dipped ASAP oh. after that. She was not playing. And, she and, I, and I didn't give her no wrong. And she dodged the bullet when it came to that because look at Cassie. Mm. Look, let's, look what's going on with her. I remember when he came out with her for, I don't know, what award show and she had that green hair, that green wig on, the neon green. And I'm like, she's, is she still with him? She's been with him for all, all, that long. You never hear anything about this girl. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe he do control her. I do believe he did have her under substance, substance to control her. Most of these celebrities in, in, in the industry, they're into that, that BDSM type of nonsense. And they take that shit to the head, especially if they got money involved. So they really on that sex slave shit. And really take it on some. You're going to lay down and bark like a dog. And do everything. As young Miami said. She like. I, when she first said that she. The peeing. I thought she do the peeing on, on, on people. So I'm like. Oh you do the peeing on the men. That's what you do. But when she said no. I like to get peed on. It's like. What? So you don't do the degrading. You get the degraded on. Mm -hmm. That that's That's what Diddy likes. Because he no money talks. I would say right. this. I went to beauty school years ago. And I remember meeting one of the girls who I went to school with. And she literally lived like two blocks away from me. And she was telling me, she gave me a little tea. And she told me that her father, around the time of the club shooting with Diddy, um, her father was the driver. 
And that time, Diddy offered him, like, you could say that you did it, and I'll offer you money. Money talks. Okay. As many times that he even said, they said that he actually would tell, Diddy would tell him to go to a certain location before the arrival place right there. So, like, two blocks away. Because he just don't want him to fully know where he's going to, to hotels, meeting his people. We all know Diddy, Diddy is gay. We all know he's funny with it. He could hide right. that if he wants to, but we all know he's a he's more gay. Even he's a bisexual man, but he more preferred to be with men. That's why he was beating the crap out of Cassie because deep down he want to do what he t ordering her to do on these men. Mm -hmm. I, I just reading everything that took that shook me to my core. I know she's telling the truth. That shit moved me. I'm not the type of person to get moved when it comes to certain things like that. But when that emotionally rocked me, that means she's not lying. She really is a victim. She's been groomed. We have, as women, we have all had that moment that as soon as we turn 19, you have these older men in their 30s and their 40s that feel like, oh, well, you know, you pass 18, you legal. So, you know, you could still come with, you know, no. So you could groom and control, right? Mm -hmm. No different. He deserved whatever he gets. That's what he deserved. Especially yeah. that whole thing, putting his hand into the whole Tupac situation too. He's he's a if Diddy's not the devil himself because the devil had many names. Did he have so many names that we yeah, all grew did. up have he having? Brother Love is a new new one now, but mm -hmm. he had Puffy to Diddy to P Diddy to to Sean Combs to Nah. That's too much. I don't trust a person who got so many names like that. That means you have diff many different personalities. Don't trust him. So it's either, he's the, the, he's either he's the a devil or he's the, de the one of the devil's best workers. I got to ask y'all a question on this. What would y'all do? Well, how does this sound for a grown man? Because this man that's been all over YouTube doing this by my daughter, they, like grooming my daughter. This man uh, said that he will fuck a 12-year-old little girl, right? You let a man groom your daughter back up. No, no, what 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 Get it was? Get him over here. No, wait, no, no he has to you, got to, you got to hear my story. I don't want to just all right. Wait, we ain't got wait, Jay Prince. We're gonna have to hold you down. Stand by. We got other people on the channel. Okay, on my the bad. Pet. On the chat. Hold on. Sugar, you good you finish. Um, I also wanted to say one more thing. Um, also with the with the young lady talking about we need to watch what our kids is, is looking at. That is actually true and accurate because I have a 14 year old, I'll be on it with her. These mm -hmm. kids are addicted to TikTok. They're addicted to all these things. As a parent, I still have to look at where she, I have to follow all her accounts. I know she's, thank God, she's kind of ditzy enough to, to accept family. So I have family snitching on, snitching on her telling me what account she have. And I check everything to see what she's doing. I the music I listen to my little vulgar music with my headphones. I don't blast that around the child because that's mm -hmm. consuming. I don't want my child to be a child. I want her to have a childhood, not thinking that she's grown. So I feel like as parents, we also need to sit down and talk to our children. A lot of us is not doing that. Sit down and get to know who your child is. Some of y'all don't even know what your child's favorite color is and what what they what choices they make or, or do they have a boyfriend? Do they have a girlfriend? Anything like that we need to sit down and talk to our kids and get to know them they're little people little humans that's becoming adults that's why a lot of us adults are sitting here having tantrums because our parents never talk to us right that's right. all i gotta say thank you baby i appreciate you sugar i hey, appreciate you coming up here spitting <laughs> all right <laughs> go ahead on all right sugar see you later baby Bye. Voodoo, can Bye. I say something real quick and then I'm going to drop? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is Talisha again. Um, one, I just want to tell you, girl, best show hands down. Okay, you have like the best program. You let everybody come up and get their one to one to I, I have with you, you know, every which way but loose, girl. I love it. Um, real quick, uh, I don't care how they get Diddy by hook or by crook. They get them. That's all I care about. I hope this federal lawsuit turns into a federal investigation, turns into prison, like you say. And uh, and I'm good with it. Anybody that's attacking our community, 
they need to be locked up. I don't care who they are. And sunlight's the best disinfectant. So guess what? Shine the light on everything. Tell it all. That's what I say. Tell it all. And yes, and I do believe keep your kids close. I still tuck my 12-year-old in. And I'm going to keep tucking her in as long as she lets me. So once again, love your show. Keep up the great work. Finally get a membership so I can freaking join. I've been only asking you this for two months now. I just don't know what to give y'all, but we gonna <laughs> Yo, give it tears, boo. Give it tears. I make a little bit of money. I can get some extra on the hats here, girl. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love your show. You guys no, take care. Thank Thanks for you. having me. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. All right. Shay Poet. What's going on, baby? Hey. Hey, Yo. my baby. I've been on a binge, okay? I think I've seen everything you've done for like a year back. I just like went and oh, yeah. I did. You're you're that person, but you know it. Um <laughs> <laughs> listen, the light came on too, it got brighter over on your side. I I think like I think my issue with the conversation, like you were talking about the celebrities, I think of them as like drug dealers of like peddling our image for mm-hmm. a price. And I think if you think of it that way the other people's argument can make sense. Oh, well, they're being enticed to do it. We say the same thing about drug dealers. Oh, well, there's a bigger corporation that's, um, right? We say that they're not the source. We say the exact same things, but we really get down to it. Who is putting it in the hands and for what purpose? So they don't see themselves as us. I agree with that too. Like they don't, you get to a certain level and you don't even see other people as people, to be honest. Um, Cause you're not a person. That's the way I see it. Mm-hmm. But so I don't know, I don't know that how there can even be a counter argument that they're doing something harmful. I don't know what the argument would be. Like, I don't right. kind of get the counterpoint or if, I, uh, unless um, the only other person with the camera <laughs> was, was saying that um, that they're not at fault. Like, it's not their responsibility to make different choices. I'm not sure what the point was, but as far as um, P. Diddy, it's so funny. Like, I'm an 80s baby too, so it's like He's been on. I the I don't even know how he made it this far, to be honest. Right. Um, when he, especially when he's got other races involved, where they don't play with their group of women and children the same way that black men are allowed other people to play with us. So that's my piece. I wanted to say that. I just really also wanted to say it's so interesting when you were talking about the gender piece. Like all of a sudden, what I don't like is when we're having these conversations. When all of a sudden we act like we don't live in a patriarchy. Right. Then, like all of a sudden it's the black community is doing this and that's that. Do you know it's the job of white men in their community to to um control the media and that white women for centuries have been saying a whole lot about their group of men, quotation marks, right? Don't white women have a lot? Didn't they start a whole movement? No. Didn't they start a whole movement against their quote unquote group of men? And I'm saying that to say that like when it comes to these conversations about protection. Even when we're talking about like a P. Diddy, all of a sudden it's the whole community that we black men want to speak on. Oh, black people need to do this and this. That's the job in other communities of the men, literally. So why all of a sudden when it comes down to what your responsibility is, is that a whole community needs to come together? Of course we have to all come together because black people are not going to do it. But when we're talking about responsibility, is when we talk about the media, don't the black community and black men specifically talk about white men running the media? Isn't that the mm. narrative? So if white men put out the media, because they're the ones who have, who were able to produce it at that level, that's why feminism, white feminism was a thing, right? Because they told them to stay at home, be quiet, <laughs> shut up and have our babies. Then wouldn't that go for other communities? So all of a sudden, when it comes to our side, the job of men, all of a sudden, it's supposed to be everybody's supposed to be doing the same thing. So we're supposed to be doing everything. Like, it's just weird. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say, but it's like, I no, just I don't understand. Want to, okay. Like when we come to these conversations and I was hoping we'll get to the educational, your educational Fridays. Um, so that, cause I know no we more. Wanna, we next Friday, we doing our educational Friday. I, wanna, I don't care. Yeah, we knew yeah, I, I did a poll. Maybe. People wanted a little both and I got caught up making jokes, acting a fool girl, Joseph. So I'm out <laughs> my bed. Cause maybe cause I, it's not everybody's a, Oh, I don't know. I would be quiet because I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I could be an elitist when it comes to thoughts. Like 
not everybody ready for the same conversation and not everybody opinion counts. Not say, everybody right? ready, you so. think alike, child. But you you open it up. So I'll be trying to be like, let me try to be me. You probably think, think just alike. You think you elitist girl. Call me elite girl. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, but mm, okay, I'm not gonna start no mess. I want to so bad, but I'm gonna be quiet and um let you get to the next one because it's four hours in and that man got on my nerves. Um I wish he had turned his camera off, but that's that's I just oh, he's still up here. Thing. Oh Lord. So what's, what's, what, how did I get on your nerves? It's like a beauty show. It's like, why be over here when we... It's so weird to me. Like, it's like, I don't know. It's just, and, you know, not that I haven't heard men make good conversation over here, but because I said I just went on a literally a binge on your videos. But it's... Uh, anyway, let me be quiet. I'm I'm Because I don't have no filter tonight. Um, <laughs> so I'm going I'm to be quiet and we'll let you go. But thank you so much for your content. I, I love you. you. Thank you so much. Bye. I appreciate you, baby. Girl, y'all don't play. <laughs> y'all don't play on these people, girl. Look. Um, D, how do you say your name? Aja MG? It's Adia Mai. Girl, say it again. Adia Mai. I love that. Oh, thank yeah, you, girl. Good. Thank Jay you, Prince, sir. Hold on. I'm sorry, Adia. <laughs> Jay Prince, go lay down. I'm talking to the lady. Let me talk to the lady. There you, you go. Now you flirting with Adia. Let me talk to no, Adia. No, I just said her name. I, I, Adia, I'm just doing it. She got a nice name. Oh, I can't even talk to Adia. Go ahead on, Adia. My bad. All right. I, I just want to say a couple things because I'm being respectful of everybody's time. But I'm a 90 day subby, like 90 day fiance, reality oh, girl. Thank you, baby. Uh, and I done got through about 75% of your content, girl. I love this channel. <laughs> and I don't sit with nobody this long. I've been here this whole life, but I love it and I'm here for it. All right. So second point, I just have to say this because I'm from Detroit, born and raised, still live, no suburb, none of that. It was not Detroit or Grand Rapids. It was Flint. Okay, with the water. Oh, yeah. It, it sure was. It sure was. It was Flint. They water. want our water. They it can't sure afford was. our water to have clean water. That started the problem. It sure but was. But that's another one. But back to my first point, I do look at this as Educational Friday because you didn't touch some people and the rest of the commenters have with some of the commentary. So I look at it that way. I'm going to still say it's an Educational Friday because we need to have these type of conversations. But on the topic, I I look at uh, the entertainment industry like a quilt, right? They mm. all connected. They all know what's going on. Ain't no innocence. They all nope. know. Even if they not engaging in it, they know what's going on. They know about the sexual abuse. They know about the rapes. They know about the child porn. They know about all that stuff. The violence, the drugs, all of it. Ain't no innocence. Not even with, with the little kids. So it's an agenda being pushed. Oh, yeah. And the agenda is not ours. So we can't even look at entertainment people as representatives of the black community because they doing what they told to do and paid to do. Uh, Diddy been problematic for years. I'm 46 mm -hmm. years old. Real into hip hop. I mean, the magazines, oh, I want all the tea. Right? Diddy been a problem. These rumors ain't just rumors. Sir, uh, Bill Cosby been a problem. He is on video. Go look that up for your channel, honey. But uh, I do want to say that a lot of people touched on, you have to educate your kids in the home as well as at school. My mother used to tell, rest her soul, she told me, learn their game and then you play your game. Because mm. you're not going to be able to navigate out here without knowing that game. That's their education. Ours ain't in it. Ours ain't in that. None of that history stuff about slavery, this, that, whatever. That stuff ain't true. Mm. That ain't how it happened. It's a ring of truth to it. So yep. we as black people have to learn to learn, not just here. We got to be able to look stuff up do a little bit of research, hear a quote and look it up before you repeat it. Cause we all out of context with a lot of stuff that we say. And uh, part of the agenda of this entertainment industry is exactly what we doing on this gender war stuff. 
Yep. We playing it out for them. And that's all I got to say. I love this channel. And I'll um, be back. Yes, Thank please. You. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Oh, I appreciate you because don't nobody bring it like you. And I, I'm a person with a thirst for knowledge. I like to, I somebody say a word, I don't know. I go look it up. Me too. Just how I love how you, let's look up the definition just in case. Because right. a lot of us don't read, and that's that's all right for the time, but I hope we learn to, to do that and uh, have a thirst for knowledge to want to know, go do a little bit, take another step further. Uh, and you bring up all types of stuff intertwined in one conversation. You We talking about the entertainment industry, and another channel would stay on that. That's all we talking about. Uh, girl, <laughs> you say, let's joke. I, do. Straight, I don't know what the hell that is. I looked it up. What is that? It's past what we time. doing right oh, now. Oh, yeah. That's passing it. time that's bullshit. Yeah. And so whatever comes up we, in the jokes, it is what it is. Hey, that's what we got to be able to do. So we talking about the entertainment industry. Other channels will just stick on that. Whatever. You got Malcolm X up here. We talking about uh, a little bit of the manosphere. We talking about Girl, we're not talking about the relationship. We talking Jay about Prince, capitalism. I, 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 I. Jay Prince not about to get us, us up here talking about no man. No, 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 no. Nah, nah. uh, I'm a debt collector. I know how to uh control the conversation on my end. Okay, you don't let me get Prince up here yeah. playing with us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, how, I, why, I, why, why would you think I'm talking about medicine? We not about to spin off. I'll just call out. It's talking about black women in this manosphere. No, uh -uh. we're not about to we spin don't off. Hear Prince, not over here. We're not about to spin off right now. Uh -uh. But you bring a lot of the the way you bring it, your flavor with it is humor, is education, is jokes, is the entertainment, it's all of it intertwined. That's why I like this channel because it's oh. not a lot of them like that. And if they are, they super small. You recommended some people. I say, okay, let me go watch this person. The yeah. video would just be about the entertainment industry. No shade. And that's okay. But that's why your channel is unique. Because it's everything. And you Aww. everything, girl. Thank you, baby. Hold on. Oh, All right. You're trying to make me cry, girl. No, I ain't trying to make you cry. <laughs> well, hey, Voodoo, do you, when you was... Because I had reacted to your old videos about Steve Harvey. Did you do a video about Steve Harvey? Probably, but I don't trust that nigga, Jay Prince. You know what? Hold on, Jay Prince. Adia, <laughs> is you finished? I'm done, babe. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I appreciate right. you. No I'm about way. to get that Prince and Frozen, babe, a.k.a. Keisha Keisha. Hold up, hold later. up. <laughs> Keisha Keisha, you don't have catfishing? What's going on? I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. thing messed up. This work for you. All right, Jay Prince, you got 60 seconds. Say what you got to say because I'm getting out of here. We've been on here four and a half hours, David. Well, I want to say I do like your channel. Um, We do need to collab. Come to the Jay. Can, can I uh put that out there, my my channel? So collab. I don't know. I ain't never collab with nobody. I still ain't collab with Moo Moo. All you got to do is just come over there, do a one on one, and then, you know, we could do one on one over, bring some more people over. I like your channel. Your channel is actually dope. Mm -hmm. And I, I know. I guess we what? can't talk. We can't talk about black women, you know. <laughs> I don't, listen because black women is the shit, and I'm not gonna talk. Even if we I never, up, hey, I have never even, said wait, that I wasn't. Even if we fucked up, I'm not talking about it amongst no black men or no other people. Period. Black men, black white men, Asian men, white women, Asian women. I don't care. See, we could discuss what the fuck going on between us. But it would never be a day, never be a day where I, I sit and discuss it amongst other people. So with that being said, if that's what your channel about, talking about genders and all of that, I'm not, I, that ain't. No, nah, it's not just solely. We talk about everything. Actually, I'm going to be doing all the time. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about, about the uh, the grooming part before before I just leave that out You there, got right? 60 seconds, Jay Prince, because I'm trying to get off of here. Well, this guy, he, this guy that used to, he helped build my channel. And you know, in the back, and we do a little video call. Team Fatty. I ain't never heard him. Boy. He 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 came out and said that he will fuck a toy old girl. Then this last week, he said he seen my kids. Oh naked. hell no! You gotta go. 
Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Why, why, I, I ain't the one that why said Why would you say that on my panel? No, uh, uh, well, I'm just saying what he said. Okay. Well, don't tell me what he said. What, uh, give your closing remarks. You got to go. I'm going to have to edit this out. It's going to be private on the main channel, y'all. I'm going to have to edit this part out. What happened? Yeah, he, he came out there and said that, you know, uh, don't repeat. my kids naked. He seen my... Bye, 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 bye. See? The show's over. Fuck it. It's over. Everybody got to go home. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over, Jay Prince. And I still see you in the back channel. It's over, nigga. It's over. Niggas got to always do the most. Fuck it. It's over. At the end of the day, get off of here, Jay Prince. I still see you back here. Get off of here, Jay Prince. Jay Prince for the president or whatever your name is. Get off of here. You is trying to mess something up. Let me just say this. I'm getting up out of here. I just want my people to wake up. I want my people to understand that you are a part of the circus show. These people is playing in your face. Jay Prince, get off of here. Get off of here, Jay. How do I get him off of here? Jay Prince, now you done messed it up. You was all right until you kicked from studio. You got to get off of here. Boom. Listen, let me say this. You did, Tawana. You did. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. You did. But look. Well, that's his name, Jennifer. I don't know what you... <laughs> y'all, y'all can catch the full live on the back of page. I'm going to have to edit this whole last part out because he's doing the most. Let me get off of here, y'all. I enjoy y'all. I thank y'all so much. I really appreciate y'all thoughts and comments. I didn't get to do my educational Friday. I really had something planned, but with all of this going on, to be completely honest, I was interested, but kind of not interested, but I really was just like, eh, whatever, whatever. But ultimately, I'm glad we got an opportunity to speak amongst each other because that's something that we need. Um, Thank you. Uh, Hold on. Thank you, Tina, for the super chat. Thank you, uh, Ginger Naps, for the super chat. And then also, hold on. Also, thank you, Kasha or Kasha, Kasha. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate y'all. Y'all really um been rocking with your girl. Oh, uh, thank you, Caramelly Mel, for the super chat, boo. For Cynthia G had to hang up on J Prince, girl. She did. But Cynthia G had to hang up on J Prince too. Girl, when? Why you didn't text me, girl? Girl, this is a lot. Let me get off of here, girl. It is nine o'clock. It is four and a half hours in. Listen, if y'all want the full live, check up the backup page, Voodoo Doll TV, the dollhouse. It's the same Voodoo Doll TV, but put the dollhouse. I can afford to figure it out over there. I can't afford to figure it out on the main page because uh, J Prince done Fuck up the whole goddamn live talking about all of that shit. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. I love y'all. Like I said, thank y'all, everybody who sent me a super chat. Let me see. Did I read all the super chats? I don't think I read them all. Hold on. Thank you, Marie. She said, your intellect is deep and I love your commentary. Thank you so much. Let me scroll down and make sure I I read everything. Uh, Adia, thank you so much. Diddy has been problematic for a very long time, and rumors repeated for the last thirty years can't all be false. Absolutely not. They whatever they say he did, he did that shit. Thank you so much, Adia. Thank you. Tawana said this is not new. Black men been buck broke hundreds of years ago. Wake up and grow up. Shake my head. Thank you so much, Tawana. Thank you so much, Tawana. You really been showing love. You know you're sending this stuff multiple times. Hit me up um on on the DMs because it looks like you're sending a lot of things more than once. And if you need some of this stuff back, let me know. I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Adil. The same thing. Diddy has been problematic for a very long time, and rumors for the last 30 years can't all be false. If y'all need, because it looks like I'm seeing the same thing twice, or maybe it's just on me. Thank you, Tawana, for the super chat. She said, Our argument cannot continue to be blame the white man. It's demons, it's a demon's job to tempt entice and capture your soul it's your job to be grounded enough in god's in god to resist temptations they made a choice absolutely that's why i be grounded i ain't grounded in a while though since y'all been up here you know what i'm saying 
Thank you, Tawana. She said the problem is greed. Absolutely. Tawana also sent another uh, super chat. She said she got in because of the brown paper bag rule. I can't remember what we were talking about when you said that, but thank you so much. All right, Sharila, thank you. She said, look up Mayor Tiffany Henyard Dalton, Illinois. Is that the black mayor who trying to get, they trying to kick up out of there? I seen her. I didn't do the research, but I seen her. Miss Parker, Miss Parker said, y'all, make sure y'all hit the like, button, the like button before we get up out of here. Thank you, Teresa, for the super sticker. Thank you, Tawana. There's been a gender war since before they created the story of Adam and Eve. This is why we must read. Absolutely. And thank you so much to Invader. Thank you so much, Invader. I appreciate you for the super sticker. And thank you so much, Humble Honey, for the super sticker. Y'all, I got to get up out of here. Like I said, typically, we normally jost in. We jost out. J Prince talking about what I do. J Prince, did you not hear what you said? Get off of here, J Prince. You're not coming back up here. You not. You're not coming back up here. It's over for your fat. Don't worry about it. You know, I, I while you was up here, it was all right. But you can't come back up, fat. You trying to get a nigga fucked up. Girl, can't do it. Anyway, I appreciate every single one of y'all. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Um, Y'all be in tune with what's going on. And I'm going to come back with my thing. I just implore y'all to wake up, please. We're going to jose in, jose out. Thank you, everybody, for the super chat. Everybody who did. And, and, and contribute it. Please like the video before I jose up out of here. The jose is coming right now. Hold on. The jose is coming right now. And I really thank y'all so much for being here. Y'all, I know y'all got a lot to do. It's Friday night. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Thank y'all. Can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy, Big Chew. The voice of the beat. You know what I want. Blaze up. Come on, Blaze. It's a beat for me. Wow, 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 wow. Drop it for your guy, for your B O Y. Do it for your guy, for your B O Y. Come on, baby, we love. Drop for your, the voodoo doll time to talk. I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up here.